Hello, and welcome to the Weekly Scroll Podcast, brought to you by the Adventure Archive. My name is Ryan. Uh, and I'm Gritzed, uh cousin to Drist, uh, and I'm like a drow, but I'm like a good guy. Um... <laughs> All right, well, that's our fucking stream. You guys have a wonderful day, and fuck you, Hunter. Right, bye. Um. Anyway, hoo man. Listen, if we wanted to get started, bringing up Drist is not the way. So for all of you out there, I'm, I'm, ooh, you don't know how hard I'm holding back about a 30 minute rant. Today on the Weekly Scroll, we are going to be going over the Shadow Dark RPG. What's in my hands, what I'm holding up is the first version of it that was, it's a quick start version that was printed, gosh, I think maybe like, like two years ago at this point. Um, and we don't often, 2022, we don't often do a game prior to getting the physical version of the game if we backed it, um, but we're going to do it this time. Uh, well, except we, we did to. with Into the Odd, so something out there. Yeah, we did it with Into the Odd. We did it with Cyberpunk. Cy a cyborg. Or, uh, cyborg. And I, I honestly think that's it. I mean, 87 episodes, and that's kind of like the only two we've really so done it with, right? You know? No, yeah. Um, but we are, we are going to... For Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, we are, we are going to do... Uh, let's do one D&D. &D. Um, and, uh, yeah. So, anyway. So, we're going to go over Shadow Dark because it, the PDF for it just dropped. And uh, it made like a million and a half dollars on Kickstarter. And uh, we, we want to talk about it. Because, who we want to talk about it. Um, but, before that, we are going to go over a couple of things real quick. One... Um, no, first, here we go. If you have uh, watched the show before, you know that we are um, uh, great friends with Eco over at the Lost Bay. And every couple of months, they do an awesome bundle of stuff uh, that you can get for a fantastic price uh, and pre-orders open for it and everything like that. The last one that they did is this thing that I've been trying super hard not to open. I'm it impressed you haven't opened it. The I fear do. bundle. It's the fear bundle. You don't know how hard it's been to not open this. So it's in my hands for you guys listening in podcast land. So instead of just doing like a like what they've been doing are the silver, like a big silver envelope, basically, that you can like tear open. Yeah. And it's great. This one is an <clears throat> actual like envelope slash kind of like soft box situation. Like it's got folds like a box. But it, you can open it up like an envelope on the back, and it's got this amazing graphic on the front that says Fear Bundle with these crying eyes, and this is from Lost Bay Studios. That's Eco over at the Lost Bay. I've tried really hard not to open this so that we can open it on stream. Um, and actually, um, I'm going to... Oh, uh, transition to the big window? Oh, shit. You know what? I should transition to the big window. That wasn't even um, what you were going to say. What were you about to say? Well, I was going to open up the fear bundle on a window that everyone else can't see so that I can actually uh, go through uh, what it is and talk about it a little bit more. Um, but yes, let's do a let's do a transition. Boom. We transitioned. And of course, I forgot to change this window. Um, so we are going to be going over the fear bundle right now. You're, I'm opening it for the first time with you guys. Um, as I do this thing and, um, yeah, here we go. This is what we're doing. All right. Windows adjusted. All right. If you listen to podcast right, land, this is called. Listen, if you're, you know, if you're, if you're just listening to this podcast right now, you can't see what's going on. It doesn't matter. No. You know? Hey, it doesn't matter. It just sounds like dead, terrible air. So we're good. So the fear bundle. I'm actually going to turn the blur off because it's just going to be a bitch. Um, there it goes. So quick, everyone read his books now. Read the titles of all the books by him. Quick, look. read, read, read. I actually adjusted this so you can finally see the top shelf, the uh, um, World Champ Game Co. and Max Moon section here. Top middle shelf. There it goes. Um, uh, because. You should be able to, because why the fuck not? Because it's like it's awesome. So I'm I'm cracking this sucker up for the first time. We're yeah, yeah. we're opening up this like envelope box situation, which honestly, this is so fucking cool. I would definitely get a release like this. You know what I mean? Or release something in this format. Really great. Peeling it open. And then this is what you see right right off the start. Is this this is what you see. So yeah. it is a, a pile of stuff, and right on the top is this beautiful um, uh, trifold <laughs> little pamphlet here 
um, that is all like silver foiling. Um, and Ooh, it is so a, cool. it's so beautiful. Um, and it's got uh, a dude on it and there's a splash over it. And on it, it says it adapts to your breathing. Um, this is a scenario for one referee and one player adapted for minimalist TTRPGs. For general minimalist horror RPG, it says Coup Critique. Um, this is dope. It says it adapts to your breathing. It's a scenario powered by a generic system that you can adapt to your favorite minimalist TTRPG. So super light system, just a way to roll to do horror in whatever system you run. That is an awesome fucking thing to Love have it. right on the top for uh, running a bunch of horror stuff. So basically a way to adapt it to whatever you want to do. Um, I do want to be able to actually um, tell people what this is. So I'm going through. It adapts your breathing. This is from um, uh, P. P. Renaud. Um, is an adventure in the form of a leaflet for a player and a facilitator. The player character is confronted with a situation that is disturbing um, as it is narcissistic. All right. Uh, the next one. This is exclu another pamphlet here. Exclusion Zone Botanist, a solo drawing and sketching game. Uh, this is from Excellent Press. Uh, they put out some awesome stuff. I recently started following them. They just kind of, I mean, I don't know how long they've been doing stuff, but they hit the ground running with a lot of really amazing content. Um, and they have a great uh, substack too that you should definitely read. Um, uh, great well, adventure with this. Dude, they, a lot. Listen, we need a substack because I got shit to say. Um, Exclusion Zone Botnet from, I'm, I feel like I'm saying that wrong. E X E U N T. Exunt Press. Exunt. Um, Celsius. Yeah, inspired by the color out of space, amazing H.P. Lovecraft, fuck you, you racist piece of shit, um, story and annihilation, you got me already, um, it is a, uh, you are a botanist assigned to document plants in a heavily forested area known as the EZ, dope, nice little map, cool clean layout, looks really fantastic, that's awesome. The next thing we got here, ooh, is a card, uh, you can tell directly from the card that this is definitely Zach Hazard's art. Right off the bat, this is um, a click clack that says on it. So this is a large uh, card, uh, two, one thing on each side, um, and click clack plus gushing graveler, Zach Hazard and Nick Tefani. Um, it's two creatures developed for use in any session of Luminal Horror. So yeah, dope art on both sides. Really great. I mean, Liminal Horror, clear. I mean, if you're going to have a fear bundle, Liminal Horror will be in this. Yeah, you kind of <laughs> yeah, <kinda> have to. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's, it's, I mean, it was, I assume it was like this, the cornerstone for this entire thing. So unit DH23 is from Eco uh, himself. He decided uh, to put some of his own stuff in a bundle, which is nice. great because Eco does some fucking awesome shit. He pretty much does like gruesome, disgusting shit or like, like. Whimsical kind of, uh, yeah. Yeah. We're talking about from like the Lost Bay um, to like uh, you, then you can look at like Sky Realms, uh, which recently yeah. um, started going out, which is like cute as fuck. Um, so there's not really a middle and that's fucking awesome. Um, but this is Unit GH23. I really think people who are really good at stuff like that. Really, the that they're they are able all of them are able to do both. So there's not a lot of middle. It's either like very comforting, fun, familiar, or like absolutely terrifying horror shit. You know? Yeah, yeah, and it's awesome that. Um, and he can do both. Um, so y this is an adventure where there's a small, ordinary prefab suburban home that hides subterranean flesh abominations. Um, and apparently you should not have taken this babysitting gig. Um, and this is inspired by uh, it's an adventure for the upcoming Lost Bay RPG. Um, got to play test that before. Can't fucking wait for that. Um, really excited. Great looking little zine here. Um, I like when the zine, when they do the little, like, it's not perfect bound, but it's got an edge to it kind of situation. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that's what this has. Um, really great, clean zine with a bunch of stuff. Oh, yeah. Look at it. You're right. Oh, and it lays open really well. Oh. Love that. So, love that. Oh, doom. Yeah. So, this is doom. great. Very excited for this. Can't wait for the actual loss. Our, um, lost, um, Lost Bay RPG to drop. Excited to run some more stuff from Eco. The next one. Oh, we have some just some interesting, just big cards here. Uh, one, it just says the swine. There's nothing on the back. Um, 
and it is gosh what is this um hell Ryan. oh i don't know i'm trying to find it. this the one says holy days of the true church um and then there is the swine i wonder if the swine is for um Da, 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 da. No, the true church is from Eco and the Stations, a system neutral wicked cult generator. The front looks like an actual church leaflet, which it does. This is something that uh, people in uh, white button downs would drop on my uh, or get yelled at to get out the fuck off my lawn. Uh, Holy days of the true church, Monday through Saturday. All are welcome. Um, and then there's some awesome stuff on the back. Um, there is a uh, character sheet um, and then there is the swine. I've never so, had anything go. dropped off from a church to my door. Um, oh my god, dude! Where I live last, people used to come knock on the door all the time. No, I think I, I think I exude an unholy aura. I think they know. Yeah, you know, they approach me. Yeah, but you know. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. And if you're religious, that's fine for you. Um, the most important thing to do, especially when they're younger. You know what I mean? Like when they're like like early 20s or even like late teens, because that's what they do. The point of door to door churching has nothing to do with converting people to the religion. They the the leaders of the church do it on purpose so that mm -hmm. people will yell at them, mm -hmm. which reinforces the teaching that the outsiders are bad and you need to stay with us. The people that are good to you and nice to you. And it reinforces their like connection mm -hmm. to the church by basically putting them into what amounts to a traumatic situation if you're if they're getting yelled at and like basically hearing all the voice in their head saying like those are the bad guys those are the non-believers shun the non-believers and then when they come back all like upset shun because the someone yelled at them Charlie. <laughs> right when they get upset they're upset that someone yells at them that puts them in a very vulnerable position so that that quote-unquote church leader can further further enforce <laughs> their ties in the church so the most important thing you can do with young people that come knocking on your door is not yell be at them, nice be very nice to them, and then just explain why they're wrong. Um, and uh, maybe they'll yeah, get it, maybe they won't. What's crazy is how typical of an episode of the Weekly Scroll this is so far. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Dude, so uh, we got a bunch more. Uh, so this has to be the Live in a Horror inv Inventory card oh. system. Yeah, so this is this adapts uh -huh. a Mouse Ritter physical play card setup um, for your um, um, Live in a Horror games. So there's a bunch of character sheets, and then the character sheet itself actually has, like, slots right yeah. here. Yeah, little number so, slots. Yeah, for left hand, body, all that kind of stuff right there. And then there are sheets here that you can cut the actual like inventory um, items out and use them in the, the mouse order style uh, to actually show what's on your body, which is so fucking cool. I really do love that about mouse order. I'm excited to go over that um, because I, I, I love like board gamey ish kind of stuff in RPGs yeah. because listen, like board games and all that actually has like a you know, a, a decent consensus of, um, of academic, you know, whatever. Anyway. Um, and then we have <laughs> doing great. Uh, so far this episode. Listen, I'm, I'm running on two hours of sleep and not enough caffeine. So I'm sorry if I sound like I'm having a stroke. So, uh, Minard Linehan's Liminal Colossus, a Kaiju supplement for any RPG. Um, this is really fantastic. I'm super excited to get this in print because this has been on itch for a while. Um, yeah. and, uh, Da, 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 da. Um, and it's it's like a it's like a quad fold situation. Look at this. It's and cool. it, for those also, in podcast land, look at look at how gorgeous that color is. I'd say this, that pink is a very familiar oh, great pink. So it is. Um da, 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 da. Minor R. Linehan is a writer, designer, and podcaster. So check their stuff out. Uh minor linehan.h.io. Um this is really neat. Um, and, uh, Apocalypse Road Trip, um, is Kaiju's UFOs and Cryptids on the open road. Check that out. Really dope. Love this. Can't wait to run, uh, Liminal Kaiju's. I'm getting to, what is this situation here? Oh, this is cool. So this is a fold out. Um, this is the Vanished for Liminal Horde. This is a dark scenario. It's a whole big fold out situation here. Very cool. Really fucking cool. Like, um, there's, 
basically it's a it's a top down with arrows on like how to move through and each of like the room areas has like descriptions right on it really fucking cool really fantastic um da, 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 da. and this is from josh demansky friend of the show josh was on um with art once again from zach um and uh you know it's 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 i love when a game and artist find each other you know what yeah. i mean like obviously Merkborg, johan didn't just do the art but like johan is the art of Mark Borg. Right. It's beautiful. Like Zach is the art for Liminal Horror and it's beautiful. When we went over like um like Neon Lords and um and even Marching Lord the same way with um mm-hmm. God, I feel like a dick for not remembering. Um but the artist for both of those, the style fits so perfect for the game. Um and uh and pretty much all of the art all the the big pieces are from that same artist and it's really really fantastic. Basically, it's like it's like yeah, it's like Scorsese finding Leo. You know what I mean? Like, there's just some. It's 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 uh, it's Johnny well, Depp. Find a better uh, example than Scorsese. Johnny, and Leo. What he's done like eight fucking movies. I League, know, but come on, and it's great. What about the guy uh, who does creepy stuff in Johnny Depp? Yeah, and Johnny Depp fucking that guy's wife or whatever. Yeah, yeah, uh, whatever. That's fine. Hello, Tim Burton. Cover. Tim Burton. Yeah, thanks. Um, and, uh, and Johnny Depp, like sometimes you just find a pair and Zach and Liminal Horror do really great. Um, then we have this called Soda Stone. This is from Alfred Valley. God, I fucking love Alfred Valley stuff. Hey, listen, Alfred Valley, if you want to come on the show sometime, you just yeah, let us know. actually, um, like, like not this, this isn't a joke. I'll reach out. Um, really, really amazing stuff. Um, and this is called Soda Stone. Uh, the music at the Soda Stone always kills, especially tonight. Soda Stone is a small town, small form, liminal horror mystery of strange tapes and rituals disguised as a gig flyer. So it looks like a flyer for a gig, but it's got this interesting. So listen, so uh, for those that aren't in chat, we do have the one and only Meat Castle in here um, who's done some amazing stuff. If I remember correctly, this fold out style um, is this. I don't have it with me. You recently did something in the same style. It wasn't it, it, um, gatefold. That's what it is. Um, while I'm repping uh, uh, your stuff, though, what is what is the one that you just put out that has this? Um, not it's not Corpo killed. Um, which because you just did two. It's the one with the white white sun or on it. Fuck. Anyway, so this is really fantastic. It's gatefold. It looks awesome. And anything Alfred Valley touches, um, I will read a million times over and not be surprised if there's like hidden shit in every part of it. So really fucking cool. Um, ooh. And uh, so there's two things. One, um, this is the very bottom one. Um, Metro Skate Bloodbath. Do you have this? I already have one of these. So this will be going to you. Um, this is written by Logan Perfect. Dean. Yeah. Uh, yes, so, um, uh, Christian did the gatefold for Lofen on my substack. It's also, da, 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 da. love what Valley did with that one. I feel like maybe you changed the style of one of your recent releases, um, and it originally might have been gatefold, but was changed when you put it on plus one store, but I could be wrong. So, um, uh, Logan Dean's done some fucking awesome stuff, uh, like the company, which I can't wait for a reprint for that. Um, and for those that aren't aware, if you're not on Twitter, they're working with one of the the one and only. I'm pointing to the Adam Vass section world champ for a game that's recently that's going to be coming out very very soon. Super Whee! fucking excited to see more Logan Dean stuff and anything that Adam Vass does, um, which is really fantastic. Um, so this is an adventure um, for that. Very excited for that. I have this um, and I have some other um, uh, stuff for the company, but not uh, not. Um, the actual company in print, um, but really excited for that. And the very last one I've had for a while, this is Breathless, and I'm positive that this is the first time that this has been in print, but it has been on itch for a long time. And this is one of those games that immediately had an SRD and has like a million games that use this system. Um, it is a survival horror RPG um, by Fari Games. Um, this is basically like, um, I feel like uh, like if the less left uh, the... What's the zombie one with the mushrooms? Oh, Left 4 Dead? No, no. Uh, sorry, The Last of Us. 
Sure. I, I feel like if, if The Last of Us was an RPG, the system that this runs, this would be the oh, system that mush. it runs in. <laughs> Papa Mushy. <laughs> Yeah, Papa Mushy. Um, so really, really fantastic. So um, the breathless system is really, really neat. Um, this is super clean. It's literally just like one thing folded in half. Um, love the art on the front, character sheet on the back. It's a really, really neat system. Um, and it's cool to actually get this in the hands. And that's the fear bundle. Um, that is the whole thing. It's fucking awesome. If you missed out on it, it's sold out. You should have fucking got on it. So you yeah. know what you shouldn't, you know what you shouldn't miss out on? You know what you shouldn't miss out on is what we're going to be talking about right now. I have no idea what we're about to talk about. I'm so lost. I have no idea. The oh. Fallen Bundle. <clears throat> Listen, honestly, go to um, thelostbasestudio.com. Go to the shop section. And then anytime a bundle drops, just buy it because Eco's only going to be putting out fire stuff and um, uh, perplexing ruins. PR friend of the show had him on. Fallen is absolutely fantastic, super cool guy. Only makes so really cool. cool content. And if you somehow missed the original release of Fallen, which I did miss a couple of the parts of it, and PR is such a cool fucking person that he sent us like all of it, and it's fantastic. I was like, um, like we were talking earlier. I'm like, it's a great bundle. I have all of this though. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, really cool logo design too. Um, Ego sent it to me in the bottom left. I actually have it like overlaid everything so we can keep it right on top. Um, this is oh, the Fallen yeah. bundle from PR and Lost Space Studio. It's it's all it's all fallen. So if you somehow missed any fallen stuff, you need to check out this if bundle. You it's $70. To our show and you kind of like well, the stuff that we like to go over. Fallen was a really good one. Um it's so good. Really really super enjoyed it. I think it's one we still need to play. Um it'd be cool to do an AP of it. Um yeah. but I oh, really yeah. loved I will once again I will always go back I really love the gun dueling rules in this one. It's like I it's I it was so fantastic. Um yeah. Super great game. Also very cool. Um, I think it's a it's like a Baroque um like era h- hoary game. Uh or hoary yeah. game? Hoary. We have your horn Hor- in the Baroque. Hor- yeah. Um, um, but yeah, I yeah, think Baroque, the vibe grim of the, dark. Broken yeah, grim. Baroque grim dark. Perfect. And hoary. Really cool. Hoary. Uh hor- listen, if you're out here hoarding it up, fallen yeah. is a game for you. But yes, um, it's so fucking cool. Like I yeah. Bur- I, Damn, I might I might read that while I'm in bed tonight because I read tabletop RPGs in bed. <laughs> yeah, and uh, and cover once again from uh, Zach did a great piece uh, for the cover Such of Fallen. Such a good piece. Yeah. yeah um and uh not only that so fallen by itself fucking awesome it is broken grim it's and broke is such a cool kind of underutilized time Absolutely. period it, it's like kind of, it reminds me a little bit of um uh, not to like search for something to be reminded of like pop culture wise but um what game am i think bloodborne bloodborne, bloodborne. Yeah. yeah hundo one hundo and I don't think there's enough stuff that hits exactly that vibe no like, there's stuff no it's kind great. of around it but yep. like, that specific vibe is very hard to find. Um, well, Baroque is such a good time period for fantasy too, because although you know how I feel about guns, the gun rules in this are awesome. Um, but it 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 kind of still hits. It's it's enough technology that you could do a little bit more advanced stuff, but it's also still enough not technology and enough like like science isn't there enough that it can still be like mysterious and like and i feel like you can do like that weird like um like almost like dr frankenstein-esque technology or yes. like um you know, like in the princess bride where they're like pumping the life out of them through like yeah. the water machine mm-hmm. like that kind of technology you could put like a broke style game um, you know what it's a it's a perfect time period for when um uh i feel like science and magic are kind of 50 50. yeah totally. you know what i mean and you can lean either way and you get yeah, tri-corner so we, hats. So obviously, if you're listening to this, you should go. To, I mean, really, you should go get the bundle. I think it's the, probably yes. the best way to get Fallen at this point. Um, I, not only that, because it's everything you fucking need for everything. Fallen. All yeah, in there's one bundle. So, so much that comes along with it. It's only $70, um, and you get the – God, let's just talk about everything that you get for it. It's the actual Fallen Core book, which is gorgeous. Um, <laughs> it is the Hill Grab uh, campaign setting, which is literally as big as the book. They're both like 40 yeah. pages long. Um, you get the uh, redux of the campaign notebook, which is A5, um, and it's 28 pages. So it's a notebook and zine for running Fallen. Super great. Um, if you're a I member don't know of, if I actually have the campaign notebook. Um, I have it because I'm a member of PR's Patreon. 
Yeah. I'm a member of PR's Patreon, but I think I joined it after that, probably. Oh, okay. So. Well, I'll, I'll send you the download. Super worth it. Or buy the bundle. Um, <laughs> There is a... One of the only things that I don't have in here is a demon card. It's an A5 print on cotton paper of a really gorgeous piece of art. Um, yeah. There is There are character sheets, and the character sheet is from... Um, oh, God. I'm going to not... Da, 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 um, notebook please tell me it's listed on here because the character sheet is absolutely stunning i wonder if their name oh, is yeah, on the it the character sheet's really cool oh my god what i'm so sorry the creator of the character sheet because your stuff is fucking amazing and the art on it is absolutely gorgeous and my my tired brain is completely blanking on the name of the person who did um the character sheet but it, how gorgeous is it with the like the blindfold over the eye that becomes like the name thing like holding the the um the like the paper coming down that has the skills oh, and yeah. stuff listed on the it character sheet it's absolutely i know i'm positive the initials are like bp and i'm just a complete fucking idiot bruno prosecco right there okay. alternate character sheet absolutely fucking stunning and they've done some amazing amazing um um stuff so really really fantastic so you get the zine you get that you get the character sheet you get a map um you get pdfs of everything <laughs> you and then three fucking decks that are gorgeous you get an oracle deck that is terror size 20 cards you get a bestiary deck that's 20 <laughs> um uh cards terror size and you get a full poker size deck um, of equipment that's 17 cards all color all gorgeous really 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 fantastic honestly if you don't own any of fallen do yourself a favor spend the 70 bucks get the entire bundle because every part of it is fucking awesome so yeah, you might, definitely want to check that out i might run hill grab actually that um sounds do like it. fun i have great it, so yeah we, we yeah we do so that is the fallen bundle and uh yeah every couple of months another bundle is going to be dropping and guess what um every couple of months we're going to be talking about another fucking bundle and here's the thing is um it's not just because eco's awesome and stuff like that the bundles are awesome and i buy every yeah. fucking one i don't know if i'm gonna get this one because i own 95 percent of yeah. it yeah and i would love to get the print but i have i also bought a bunch of pr's prints too because this art is fucking awesome i kind of i um, it's, i, I kind of want to message pr and be like hey can i buy one of the campaign notebooks just the I, print oh yeah, yeah. oh just the notebook I, yeah yeah because i really just want the i really just want the notebook i really like it i was going through because they give you if you're listening that if you go to um if you go to God, where is my oh yeah, uh, thelostbasestudio.com, which is where you can buy any of these things. They they have a little walkthrough image by image and the um, campaign notebook interior, um, very cool. Um, I really yeah. genuinely want it. Um, yeah, but yeah, it's really dope. Like it's got um. The hex maps, it's got like a location section, it's got lists for a bunch of stuff. And then there's like an entire section of of like roll tables, like a D8 across to a D8 of like putting together <laughs> rooms and stuff. Like it's more than just a notebook. Like there's so much no, content to actually run stuff. There's some cool practical tools yeah. in it. That's what I really liked about it. So yeah, and I mean, and even in the hill grab, like if you if you were um, one of the uh, again, if you had if you were a backer a long time ago, the Oracle card that's printed in the hill grab book, you actually got as like a card yeah. and it's on that kind of like uh, LFOSR stock. You know what I mean? So it's really fucking cool. The uh, the uh, the Oracle page here, which is really, really fantastic. Oh, Long hey, the campaign notebook is on uh, Perplexing Ruins uh, shop. So, oh yeah, you did go. you find it? Because I was I was googling perplexing ruins uh, shop yeah, right it's now. Yeah, big trying cartel. To find out. Perplexing I ruins need... shop dot big cartel dot com. Yeah, I need to um I need to uh, give uh, give a couple of people um uh, permission to drop links in chat because yeah, I know <laughs> everyone's they're like awesome oh. and they drop <laughs> it and it's just like three stars. Um, <laughs> but uh, but yeah the the shop is right there uh, you know what and i mean pr is a friend and a homie let's look at his shop perplexing ruin shop that you I just said i want that poster so bad. we're so off we're going really so off script right now but i can't tell you how much i want this poster yeah. Um, oh yeah. The the cosmic shifts poster. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. How fucking cool. It's gorgeous with like the wolf and the moon. Like it's really really beautiful. Um. There's only fifty screen prints. It. It's gorgeous. A uh, moss stripped woods is a bastard adventure they just recently put out, which is really fantastic. The oracle Actually, deck is uh, here. Wait, hold on. 
Oh, I pulled pull oh, yeah. everything in the living room. It was just right here because oh. I was referencing it for my hex crawl. My, but it's in the living my, room. Mine is right. It's that green one that's I'm pointing to right there. Um, <laughs> okay. Yeah, the campaign notebook is 11 bucks. Hill grabs right here. All the decks are right here. But honestly, like it's worth it to just get it as a bundle. Um, yeah. And I, I actually, I have the fire ritual print too. Um, so anyway, yeah, PR is PR is the fucking man. Um, and their stuff is absolutely gorgeous um really really fantastic when i was so excited when falling came out because i was a huge fan of um of um uh like ward and some of the other stuff they put out tomb yeah um so there it's just really fucking awesome content um they're a great uh person uh they do a lot of amazing stuff so um anything that they do artistically or or design wise you want to check out yeah Don't miss I, like, bundle. I, pretty much anytime they do art for anything i'm like okay i'll get it like i'll get yeah yeah, Ooh, yeah, yeah that. exactly. Um, um, it's just it's yeah, if you if you like like you said before, like if you like the bullshit that we spout about all the time, this is the kind of stuff that we love. So if you're yeah, at all a fan of the show, you'll love house. this. Yeah. So, yeah, exactly. So anyway, let's get to what we're really talking. I think I think we're are we are we are fuck we it, we're going to really? fucking we're going to do Fallen, guys. <laughs> we're going to do Fallen. We're going to do Fallen again. <laughs> um yeah you know what um, uh let's let's just do this um nothing, nothing like just going in on plug in pr for just because we got off on a tangent for like 20 minutes i mean dude i listen it for someone who makes content as good as perplexing ruins does and someone who's as good of a person dude, is i would do a whole episode where i just fucking rep pr you know shit. What, uh project i really wanted and i was bummed it didn't go through was uh brazen uh crown the battle oh, yeah. game uh, PR mm. did all the art for it, and I was like, "Yeah, a hundred percent." Yeah, it just you know, it's it's it, it, that was um, I, I I was surprised it didn't, and then they tried to do was, it again, and and I it didn't quite go through. Surprised it didn't yeah. make. Um, yeah, it just seemed like the thing that everyone wanted. I mean, I fucking I don't. It. I think I don't know if it was just like uh, it was just a weird time or just like a like I don't know what it was about it because I definitely thought it was going to or if just the cost of what they wanted to do just exceeded like the need is what it, or, or or the desire for it at I the mean, time. Yeah, you have to figure like making a, a card game has got to it's got to be expensive. Super expensive. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it did look great. I'm, I'm hoping some some variation of it eventually comes out. Um, but but yeah, and then but I think all the art reverted back to him, so hopefully he does something with that. So, yeah, um, completely agree. Anyway, PR, awesome fucking person. Buy this goddamn bundle. Let's get to the, uh, the show. Let's uh, let's fucking do it. So we're going over uh, sh Shadow Dark. So before we hop in, let's talk about a couple of things here real quick. So Shadow Dark recently funded on Kickstarter for a fuckload of money. For yeah. way more than I can imagine that Arcane Library, who created this, um, Kelsey, um, possibly imagined that it would, considering that the goal was like $10,000 and it backed for, what, like $1.3 million fucking dollars? Um, but why, honestly... Why do you think that was? That it was oh, so successful? The, honestly, like, she has got to um, thank her lucky stars. Um, and honestly, like, the timing is because WotC sucks um, and uh, really fucked everybody around with the whole um, license shit, right? Yeah. And here's the thing. For anyone listening, real quick rant. We didn't fucking win. You didn't win against a corporation because they fucking decided not to do the shit with the license, right? For those that aren't listening, right? So WotC, giant fucking piece of shit corporation that owns uh, D&D. Um, well, Hasbro owns D&D, but then there's uh, Wizards of the Coast that owns Magic and D&D. At the end of the day, Magic will always make more money than D&D, and they can't stop fucking around. So what they did is they hired a bunch of assholes at the top of the company that don't give a fuck about D&D, right? Or you or anyone that plays any fucking games. They don't give a fuck about you. They just want your fucking money. They hired a bunch of assholes that are literally quoted it as basically saying, fuck them, fuck this license, and fuck the people that play it. Um... And so what they did is that's what they tried to do is fuck everybody. So first of all, you never needed a fucking license. You never needed 1.0a to make D&D compatible shit. It was just because you, you can't copyright rules. What they really copyrighted, quote unquote, was the language in which they express those rules. So you can't say ah, nothing like <laughs> yeah, you can't say dexterity check. So you can just write agility. You never needed the license. And even the person that wrote the license said we only did it to trick people into thinking that they needed it. So they would do shit for our shit, right? 
you never needed it. So what they decided to do was take that away from people and people started freaking the fuck out because a lot of people make their livelihoods off of 5e and like, but if you look at a lot of games like OSC and a bunch of stuff, everything uses 1.0a, right? So a lot of people were like, what the fuck's gonna happen to the entire industry when they fuck everybody? And rightfully, the entire industry said, fuck this, right? And they, the and but I'll tell you right now, the only thing, they don't give a fuck that you didn't want that, right? They could care less. They would have done it in a goddamn heartbeat. The only thing that stopped them from doing it was because so many people canceled their D&D Beyond subscriptions to the point where even Hasbro was like, bro, we're hemorrhaging money. What's going on? Stop doing that. So they decided to come out, jerk off some PR bullshit to be like, our bad guys, sorry, and then put the, um, uh, said, we're not gonna change the license, right? Um, and um, and not only that, we're gonna put the 5.1 SRD into Creative Commons, which guess what? You also didn't need, right? Okay, didn't need to do that. And for anyone that, and then the entire industry went, oh, thank you, and went back to sucking the golden teat. And everyone was like, well, we won, so stop bitching about it. We didn't fucking win. You don't win against a corporation if the corporation exists when you're done protesting. Like, you, like you're fucking sheep. Like, the all they did, right, was stop doing the thing that they shouldn't have done in the first place. And then by putting 5.1 in the SRD, the only reason they even did that is because things like the Orc license started um, uh, popping up, right? Uh, uh, Cobalt Press started doing um, Project Black mm. Flag. All of these things that honestly was going, the whole point of the original license was to keep people in the D&D sphere, right? Use our language, make stuff for our game because they know, or the people that knew at the time knew that the third party content, the homebrew stuff needs to be in our language language so that they buy our game because the number one seller do you, what do you think is the number one money maker for all of dungeons and dragons uh i don't know tell me the player's handbook everything else doesn't yeah. fucking matter everything else is fluff that's why all the adventures in 5e suck that's why everything else sucks they do because they don't suck. Give a fuck. <laughs> it just is so you buy the player's handbook so if people keep making third-party content that's still shit to encourage you to buy the player's handbook right that's I think all I'm they care go ahead about and, uh and and uh, do one more because I feel like that counts as more than one thing. Oh yeah. Uh, oh, for okay, the for the go. counter. Yeah. So basically, the they put five point one into the SRD because the entire industry started shifting away from D and D, right? So and everyone was like, okay, we're gonna strip all the language that D and D uses out of all of our shit. Every big company, Pathfinder, OSC, everything, right? So mm -hmm. then the entire, so mm -hmm. they went, how can we make them not do that? Let's put 5.1 in into Creative Commons. Let's leave 1.0a alone. And anyone that thinks that that was a victory and that they were being nice and like giving you a gift needs to pay the fuck attention because what that did was completely undercut all momentum for people to move away. Because have you heard anything about the Orc license since? No. Nope, you haven't because it was a preemptive strike. Um, so... Why did Shadow Dark do as well as it did? Because it released a 5e mixed with OSR right in the midst of all of that. I thought it was just because the book looked so nice. So No. So anyway, <laughs> that is why it did so well. So originally, though, they put out this, which is the Shadow Dark Quick Start, which is two awesome zines with some great art, and they even released a third zine for it called Curse Scroll, which is like more content for it, and it even came with character sheets and stuff. It was a really cool release. There were well done zines. There's art on the backs of all of art them. Art style is good too. It's a good art style's so good. Yeah. Um. So why did it do as well as it did? Because of the time period it dropped. If this dropped, uh, like eight months earlier, I don't think it hits fifty thousand dollars. I'm right. completely honest. I don't think it does. But I think the time in which it dropped with the industry and stuff like that and people finally opening their eyes to maybe some other games was a really great. So timing wise, as we go through, this is like a really great if you're trying to step away from 5e, um, this is a great area to step into. It is an adequate area to step into. Sick. <laughs> So, um, <laughs> for those of you who are, who are not watching, we're just nodding at each other continuously. <laughs> yep. So, yeah, so I'm going to try to focus up here and we'll get going into it. So, and that's not to say anything about 
um, uh, Arcane Library, Kels or anything. Again, like uh, as far as the, what I just ranted about with Watch and stuff like that, I, the timing was just great. And it's awesome for, for, for her and for her company and for the Arcane Library, the amount of money they made. I can only imagine that everything they can do now, they don't need to worry about any money for any projects going forward, which is really fantastic. So um, Shadow Dark, when it was originally zines, was neat. And then what they decided to do was turn it into a big book. Um, All right. And we'll talk about that as we go through. But so what 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 real quick, what were your initial like reactions when you read this book? Um, it, I think it's a good um, I think it's a, a perfectly fine game. Um, I like it. It's very easy to understand, um, especially once again, like I feel like if you're transitioning for, from 5e to more of an old school feel, but you still want kind of like the six stats, you still want like the the roll over. Um, yeah, I think it's good. I was not um, maybe blown away by any anything uh, individually, um, but it's not to say that I didn't like it going through it. Um, yeah, but I mean, you know me, I'm a D20 roll under like into the odd hack kind of guy. So, yeah. um, and I've been spending this whole week going through uh, Black Sword hack and being like, this is the best thing ever. Um, but like, yeah, for like, if I was going to go sit at a table, I would much rather play this than D&D. Um, yeah. Yes, I yeah. agree with a lot of that. Here's I, I think my first impression when I read it, when it was the quick start um, was one thing. And then when I read through the PDFs, it was about the same here. The, the book is just is more stuff. Um, yeah. And it's both of the it's both of these put together into a, a gorgeous book. Um, well, the pictures look gorgeous. We don't have the physical yes. thing yet. Theoretically, exactly, it's a gorgeous yeah. book. That's exactly what. So it builds itself as OSR um mixed with um 5e right if you like 5e but you want to play a better game um this this tries to be a middle ground and honestly we'll talk about the end on whether it succeeds at that or not but that was the goal yeah um and uh and yeah um so yeah so we're checking it out so two things right off the bat one this is not like the it's cover but it's a virgin piece of art for the cover it what fucks. Do you this is it, this is it by far Everything we go through, this is my favorite piece of art right here. Like, yeah. no contest actually, at all. Yeah. Like, I am, the, my background so is really piece. cool. Um, mm -hmm. But, like, this weird, like, very, very alien, pseudo beholder, eye tyrant, like, yeah. um, eldritch horror. Yeah. It just fucks tremendously. So, it fucks super hard. Like, you're right. Yeah. It looks like a giant zombie eye tyrant, like, dripping, like, as it's oh, like coming through a an archway, like a cyclopean archway, which is, in, and then you have a yeah yeah, um, and uh, yeah, it's a gorgeous piece of art. It's it's art. The thing is, like all of the art from the original zines was just reused for the book, which is totally and fine because they already paid I'm for it. And it's super beautiful. okay with that. Yeah, yeah. yeah I think it was like hundred percent okay. Yeah, yeah, if it's if it's not broke, uh, please don't fix don't it. Don't fix it. It's good art. You know? What's interesting too, so th th there's two versions of the book, right? There's the this is the the standard version, and again, great best piece of art in all of it. You're right, fucks hard. There is a premium version that they did put out though. This got like a leatherette cover. And oh, the premium the pr version. It's like a naked eye tyrant. Yeah, you know? it is. Yeah, it's super naked. It's very sussy. It's a sussy baka. Um, so the actual PDF puts a um a print of the leatherette version in the green that's on it and it's foiled and it's got it's a it's a piece of art that's in the book too but they turned it into a great piece for the cover it's disgustingly it's, uh, cool yeah that's uh, that also is very that's a very good piece yeah right there, you know? it's, it's a skeletal kind of king on a throne holding an orb with skulls at its feet the the art is fucking awesome and, Let me and tell the fact you, that if they we turned this into and we came across yeah. that my character is trying to pick up that orb you know you know oh, how hunter oh. does yeah. Oh, listen, if they, if they ain't pondering, yeah. picking up the orb. I'm not here trying to um, ponder some orbs. Yeah, that's what we got to do. Uh, so right off the bat, I love that there's. I love that. I mean, the perfect for them that they put out a premium version because why not? Because guess who fucking bought the premium version? This fucking guy. Um, and uh, yeah, and uh, and all the artists fucking gorgeous. That's one thing we can't say bad about the whole thing. They and what I love about the artists throughout this is this is a very modern take on old school art. Totally. 
Yeah, because it does not look like old school art, but it does look like old school art. But it does, I mean? yeah. It's very yeah. reminiscent of old school art. It's a, yeah. you know, I think, um, I, I think the tagline on Kickstarter was like, um, like old, old school modernized. Um, and I think that was very appropriate. Yeah. Old school gaming I mean, modernized. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I do. I think that was the goal. And again, like we'll, we'll, um, and, and well, I, I think that as we go through these vertical roads too, but like I think for 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 me and you, like we're always like, yeah, less is more. Um, but for mm -hmm. some people who aren't really used to that, like the more is more, you know. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, that, that's a that is a great way to say it. Yeah, <laughs> that's exactly that's exactly what it was. It's old school gaming modernized. Um, and and yeah, the book looks gorgeous. Classic adventure gaming for five E and old school players alike. One book, all you need to play. I mean. Yeah. Also, a sh big, big shout out. That's one book. <laughs> All you need to play. Didn't, uh, yeah. didn't want to bleed this dry like Watsy. So. Yeah. And uh, cool. yeah, and it and it backed for one point three six five million dollars. So I mean, again, uh, I've I've read. I own a lot of Arcane Library stuff, and they did five E. I think the adventures that that Kelsey wrote were really good for five E. Like they they know what they're doing. They know how to to write stuff, and I and they did a really good job. I think with the goal that they're going for with this. Um, and uh, I, I don't think that anything about the goal um, uh, can be critiqued necessarily. I think uh, it, to me, what I felt at the end, whether regardless of my opinion about the style of game, objectively, I think they did a really good job of what they're going for. Probably, yeah. I, I would, I would probably agree with that. You know, yeah. like it really, yeah. So, okay, well, let's so, get into uh, it. Yeah. So right off the bat, there's um, uh, I, like inside cover pages for like weapons, armor. Tells you right off the bat. I mean, there's a cost, type, range, damage, properties, all that stuff. So a lot of minutia as far as weapons, items, stuff like that. Um, regardless of how you feel about inventory and money and stuff like that, it's here. It exists. There's a bunch of different types of armor, leather chain, plate, shield, mithril, all that stuff, stats for all of that right off the bat. Um, and then it gets right into, um, uh, even before the index, there is a quick rundown of like the basics of the game, which got to love that. Yeah, I the fact that it's so early on, I'm like, oh, I can reference this immediately. That's, there's, um, that's value to me. Like I can open the book and be like, yeah, okay. Well, you know, a twelve is like a normal like yeah. DC. You know, perfect. Yeah. Um, the other yeah, thing about cool. uh, the other thing about this page being right here is realistically, if you've if you've played Five E and you've read a lot of tabletop games, honestly, this page really tells you everything you need to know about this game. Yeah, yeah. Because as soon as I finished this page, I went. I know exactly. I pr I can pretty much write like eighty percent of the rest of this because I can tell exactly where they're going with it. So there's difficulty class, which is it's it's standard. Pick a DC, um, easy, normal, hard, and extreme. Nine, twelve, fifteen, eighteen, um, and it's got some great examples for each. Um, there's morale, which Five E has as an optional rule. One of the worst things Five E did was put some of their best stuff into the DMG, into which is one of the worst things ever. Into optional, just put it in the fucking game. Put cleave <laughs> yeah. and morale in the fucking game. Um, <laughs> yeah, whatever. No it's one's like gonna the DMG anyway you know, because I'll, it's just a I, bad. I fucking know I always book. point this out, but it's like hirelings. It's like. Why yeah. do they? Why have we stop pushing hirelings? Like that's a fun part. Like, dude, my, my point me. Yes, you're right. Yeah, um, but yeah, morale DC 15 wisdom check. We we all know what that means, uh, and that's a 5e thing. That's a standard D&D &D thing. Um, dying is different, and we'll go over some of these rules as we go because we're not going to. We do this all the time. We go through. We go over it like three times. There's rules on dying, which are a little bit more um, old school ish. Um, that's a tweak. Uh, distance and movement is exactly the same. Climbing, falling. Um, I don't like the falling rule. One d six damage every ten feet. Um, I know that that's been a debate forever in D and D realms. Listen, um, there is a reason that when you throw a penny off the Empire State Building, it's not going to kill anybody. Um, it is called uh, terminal velocity, so there should be a maximum for your falling damage. But whatever. Um, moving through stuff, I hate. I hate this so much. I hated it with a passion. I don't know if it's going to come up later, um, but remind me, and we'll talk about moving through stuff because I hate it. Um, uh, swimming and spell focus. Success, failure, distraction. It's a thing. So that's in the game. Um, and then, let me tell you what. Let me tell you. Whoever put tell this together, me. and I assume it's Kelsey. Listen. Oh. The hyperlinks. Oh, I mm. know. It's crazy. It's so oh. good. Oh. Like, that... Every, as soon as I hit this page... 
my like perspective on the entire rest of the game went hmm, okay all right i'm a little more open to this now because it's it says shadow dark at the top in a great font very very um uh evocative um it's got writing design layout and then it's got a list for all of the art um and every artist and every page and you can click on every page number to go to that page to that art I know that takes a long fucking time and I can't tell you how much I appreciate it. I think it's amazing for the artist. I think it's awesome for the book. Really gorgeous. Really, really fantastic job. Some legal bullshit. Arcane Library's logo. Shadow Dark's logo. <laughs> that legal nonsense. We, yeah. And then we get to, I think I think Kelsey's actually doing like a legal AMA tonight um, or, or soon. Oh, cool. I think I got a Kickstarter update for it. Then we go to the table of contents, which is, guess what? Completely fucking high linked. linked. Gorgeous. Killing, killing the game here. Um, and not only that, when we click open to bookmarks, guess what? Super fucking bookmark too. So as far yeah, as like totally. layout goes for navigability, <laughs> I know. really, really fantastic. Job. Really I was so worried. Strong. I was so worried deep in my heart that it wouldn't be. And that I was just getting so mad and just hate the game 10 times harder because it wasn't really glad it is. And I honestly think that like the, again, that art page in the beginning being completely hyperlinked and the artist being, um, uh, um, uh, repped as much as they are on that page. It's so, yeah, cool. yeah. so cool. Um, so a uh, bunch of sections, intro characters, um, uh, gameplay and game master. We, this is, oh, and then it keeps going and then monsters and treasure and random cables. This is like 323 pages. I'm gonna be straight with you. At the end of the day, the quick start is what you need, right? I think putting yeah. this in a book was cool or whatever, but a lot of that stuff, realistically, you can just get from the quick start. Actually playing the game, this is all you needed. Probably why it's called a quick start, because you can start quick and actually play the game. Um, so we're not going to go over, I, I'm going to say, what, like 60, 70% of this book? Yeah, we're going to hit, I think we, we've agreed we're going to hit all the way through everything that would be in the quick start up to like the 52, page 52. And then we're going to cruise through some of the gameplay stuff um and uh yeah i think i think that'll be i mean the rest is like listen if you need treasure and monsters and uh there's a lot there's such, a lot for you there's a there's a really respectable amount of material for running a game i think this is going to be a good value game because there's just so much shit in this but you just run so much i mean you run so much you know like yeah um yeah. there is uh hold on real quick just i would just real quick there are like seven pages of just treasure um in like um the treasure section of just like leveled treasure and then monday night it's crazy um yeah you could yeah. easily populate a fairly decent sized game world and not repeat very much using this book um mm -hmm. and random encounter yeah. tables uh, yeah it's good it's a great like it's a great all-over tool i um, mean you definitely only need the one book which i love yeah yeah, I, I will say I'm very happy if I ever do decide to run this that I do have the quick start and I'll just look at errata or like updated PDFs because it's great as a big resource book. Um, but I'm curious once I get this giant tome in my hands, I, I, I have a feeling it's not going to be super playable at the table. And I'm really glad that there is a quick start. We talk about that all the time. The fact that like, oh, you don't listen, I don't get the big books to the table. I get it so I can hold it and go. Ha, ha, ha. Exactly. I pull up the exactly. PDF at the table. So, yeah. And that's why it's also nice to have the quick start because this does come with PDF yeah, too. So it's I really think... easy. Yeah. I think I'm gonna. I did actually did not back this project. Please don't kill me. Um, uh, I actually don't know how I missed this one because I don't even. I don't even really distinctly remember choosing to not back it. Um, which mm. is weird. But I definitely will. I think I'm gonna get it when it comes out in full release. Um, I'd like to get mm. the zines because I'm a zine boy. Um, mm. but I mean, you can make a late pledge now. Ooh, a late pledge now. You know what? I might oh. I might even be able to uh, I might even be able to tweak. I'm not sure if I can, but I might be able to tweak my add ons to just throw on some of the stuff you want. Remind me. Shoot me a message. Okay. Um, so, um, but yeah, I like it. as a resource. I think that's what was added to this versus a quick start is yeah. is stuff it's stuff that is great for if you're trying to run games. And that's cool. That's yeah. Good. Um, so, uh, getting into it, um, again, gorgeous fucking art. I think there's a piece behind oh, you. Yeah, it's a great piece. Genuinely yeah, such a good piece. We're, we're going to talk about the art a bunch, and one of the things I really love about this too is they didn't skimp on page count to not give you full page art. Yeah. But I will say, layout-wise, um, it's pretty much a page of all text or all art. There's not a lot of mix. And it's, I, I don't have an opinion either way about that. 
Um, yeah, yeah. I do like the font choice that they did. I love me a good fucking black letter. Like my soul is written in black letter. It's gorgeous. This mm-hmm. this interesting like this interesting bar with like a, a a design underneath it. They use a ton. It's fine. Honestly, I could do without the little thing underneath. I'd be fine with the bar. I don't oh, think it I adds like anything. The thing underneath. I don't know why. I I you know what I think bothers me the most is it's very chopped off. Like I feel yeah. like it was a piece that was like chopped into a triangle versus the piece that was drawn as a triangle, and I don't know why it like kind of tweaks me a bit. But it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. I get it. Um, I get it. I will say that um, Shadow Dark, the whole kind of vibe story, Shadow Dark. Um, a lot of it is told through these little like slices at the bottom of the page. There's like a little swath of art. It almost looks brushed on or whatever. And then there's right. like a one one page little blurb that goes, here's some vibe. It's an interesting way to do it because it's not yeah. a setting book. Um, and this first one says, in these nighted halls, doom and glory bloom eternal. This is the story of the shadow dark. Um, and then there is a whole page narrative, which a lot of games do this. And I personally love this. I love the narrative in the beginning, and I love this a lot better than what is an RPG. I, this is just a um, a story of characters. And one of the things I do love about this is that there are a lot of these little narrative pieces throughout, and it uses the same characters. Love when, love when they do that. Yeah. Krie- Krieg pops up a bunch. Not going to read this, um, but it's – I think it's, it's great. There. I think it's in here. It's great. Yeah. And, but basically what it says, it's 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 um it's it's people delving in a dungeon. Um and it gets to the whole point of like uh the crawlers had met their true foe. It was all around them, never slowing, never sleeping, never ending. It was the shadow dark. And there's that moment where where they say the title of the movie in the movie and you and then you keep and it going. cuts to the title really big across the you know yeah, exactly. Um, and then it says, what is the Shadow Dark? What is the Shadow Dark? The Shadow Dark RPG is a fantasy adventure game where you and your companions delve into buried ruins, lost cities, spider infested forests, and even fearsome dragon lairs in search of golden glory. So um, I, I do like that they straight up tell you we're going to go back to that old school vibe of dungeon delving, right. not playing Fa- faction shit in a city and yeah. and all of the stuff that 5e tries to stuff into a combat game um i do like that the purpose of the game is to go into dark scary places and steal shit yeah, just like real life yeah i love it i think that's great i think it's i think it's really great um what defines this game speed danger and simplicity i disagree with simplicity um magic is perilous the battles are fast and deadly Disagree with that, too. Um, Being clever is crucial for survival. Shadow Dark is a rules light and intuitive. I disagree with that as well. Um, I don't know about being rules light. It's a 323 page book. Um, Even when you chop everything else out, it's still like it's not it's not light. It's this is not rules light by any stretch of imagination. It's not like like, it's not like uh, like like Shadow Run, you know, like it's definitely lighter weight. It's a rules medium game. Rules medium. And we've always said 5e is a rules medium game. Like, it's not the heaviest game ever, but it sure as fuck ain't rules light. Like, I have a card. I have a, I have a, I have a business card on the back of that thing that's got a whole game written on the back. Okay? Rules light. This ain't rules light. Uh, it's, <laughs> rule, it, it, it's, it's lighter than 5e. I will say it's lighter than 5e. Totally. You know? But it's, it, ain't, it ain't rules light. I'll say that straight up. Um, in this game, a torch holds back, blah, blah, blah. How do you play? You roll some dice. We don't need that. I like... You know, uh, it says read the basics, go through the basics. You got characters, you got uh, you describe an action, you roll some dice, you do some checks, you make some Love moves, that. You, you 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 play in rounds. It, listen, this is fine. Here's the thing: I usually hate I usually hate this, right? Not hate it. I usually think a lot of the um, what is an RPG thing is super super unnecessary. I will say for I think a lot of the people that are going to play this game have either not played an RPG before or have only played 5e. Yeah. And I, I mean, think that th- I think this for those is not people, bad it's to have like, for that. I feel like if you're transitioning out of 5e to something else, this is rules light, you know, like it's slightly less rules, it's slightly lighter rules medium. I, I agree. Um, but so this section I feel like is, is almost a requisite for a book this size. Um, yeah. And I'd like that the, that it's, I think honestly, the, the font's just fucking big. It's not me, right? The font's big, right? I think so. I mean, it's it's an incredibly readable font. So yeah, um, it's you know I can actually do like an edit PDF thing here and tell you what size it is. It's not a size ten. 
I don't know. It looks big on the page. I'll tell you that. Um, but um, uh, so it goes over movement, goes over rounds. I like that this stuff is in the beginning because it's one of those things where this is a nice section of reference and then it goes over totally. it again all later. So it talks about dice. It talks about advantage and disadvantage. Listen, if you've ever played a dragon game, it this is I'm going to be straight up because we talked about this before the stream started. If you've ever played a dragon game, I think the thing that strike the what is one word that is, that 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 comes to your head if you've ever played a dragon game that you feel about this game hunter one word mm -hmm. um i i don't have a word i've got a, a sentence but okay I mean, what's your I, sentence? What, what do you what are you thinking tell me what you're thinking i think it's just basic oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Simple. What was your sentence? What was your simple, simple uh, D D20 rollover. <laughs> it's fucking D20 rollover. I mean, like, I listen, like, if you've ever, if you've yeah. ever played a dragon game, you know, the beside, moment and, and, we start talking about DC and AC and D20 rollover, I'm like, I know exactly what this game is. Um, it's exact. That's what it is. It's D20 rollover with six stats, HP, basic checks, and that's it. That's the whole game. That's really the whole game. You know what I mean? So and right, it's well, just, that was uh, that was the weekly scroll. Um, we'll catch y'all yeah. next week. Yeah. So, so yeah. And again, next again. There's no art on any of the pages, and then full page art, and full page art, and good full page art. Great it's so piece good. again. It's really cool, good. Yeah, modern old school piece. Like you know the the wizard, the dwarf, the halfling, and the orc or half orc dungeon delving. You know. Yeah. It's good. It's good. It's good. Guess which one I, I do am. like it. Oh, uh, you're the little hobbity dude. No, I'm the old man wizard. Come on. I don't know. I don't know. You don't really talk about magic very much. No, you're right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, so going into the character section, um, and then we get another little slash on the page with this little uh, this little vibe at the bottom. Both the wise and foolish risk their fortunes in the shadow dark. The darkness decides who is who. Um, let's talk about this real quick so I don't talk about it every time it pops up, and I'll just ignore these going forward. There, this isn't a setting. There is no setting to this. Right. You play wherever you want. I feel like, personally for me, with how how hard it pushes like shadow dark i think is an incredibly evocative name great fucking job i think it's it's a really underutilized name oh my god dude like the the fact I thought that we were like we were going into the shadow dark and like and and yeah but yeah i i will say the fact that the only aspects of this game really that are dark or gloomy or horror or any aspect of what i thought could possibly be in here with all of these little blurbs at the bottom that talk about how like dark and scary stuff is like there is no mechanic in here that reinforces that at all well there is like a like i guess there is like a shadow dark map you can make um when yeah, you like, but, but, but like as opposed to the overland hex are you talking yeah. about like just like uh, like in a setting way what I'm saying, not just in a setting way, in a game way, right? Like, if I make a game that goes, this is really dark, this is really deadly, mm -hmm. like, be scared. Like, oh, I expect yeah. at least something about the game, the game itself, to reinforce that feeling for me right. in gameplay. Yeah, mechanically, be... there's not a lot here that's like, oh, yeah, well, yeah. you know, um, if your, you, tor if you, your torch goes out, you start taking mental damage or whatever, you know? That's what I'm saying. Like, you could strip out all of the black on this you can chop out all of these little blurbs about how the shadow dark is so scary and you could call it like pink world and like the game doesn't change i don't think the mechanical gameplay changes at all I, it's it's all vibe and i wish there was a little bit more mechanic to the shadow dark <laughs> right Any, anything a, a, like more horror check or like anything you know um so and and i'm gonna try not to talk about it a bunch i i feel like the whole concept of the game like narratively was really cool and i really wanted to see it more in the rules of the game yeah but anyway um like an addition <laughs> yeah. more overview i feel like so much of the early part is just like let me talk about this and then we talk about it again and, and that's fine um so uh an overview of making a character you pick a name you pick an ancestry, which is their way to be a little bit more racist about picking a race, or a little less racist about picking a race. There we go. I was gonna um, say it's kind of less racist, actually. But yeah, you're right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it tries. You know, I, I, I'm just <laughs> of the mindset of just like don't put that. Sh uh, why, like, why give that mechanics at all? 
I'm, oh, like, I'm in my game. Everyone's an orc. So yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, I just like it, like when I make games, I I much prefer to just not talk about it at all, and people can just choose whatever they want to be. Yeah. But like the fact that there's any like mechanical benefit or 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 burden to like who like how you were born, I don't know. It's gonna tweak me no matter what. Um, um, this also tries to throw culture in there too. It's fine. It's fine. Um, uh, and so you pick a name, your ancestor, your class. Um, you start at zero level, zero or one. Um, you get XP from shit. Um, you pick an alignment and a deity if you need one. Um, you can earn titles. You pick a background. You roll your stats. You get HP. You have an AC. You do some attacks. You get some talent. You might be able to have some spells. You carry some gear. That's a character. That's pretty much all you need. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Cool, cool, cool. Love yeah. it. Um, so starting, uh, do you want to, do you want to, do you want to make a character while we do this so we can just go over like one class and then we'll just do yeah, it. It's like, probably the easiest way to do it. A little thing. Um, okay. While you're going over that, there's two, there's two, two ways to really start the game. There's zero level characters and first level characters. So zero level is like, you're not even adventure yet. You're just some schmuck. Um, and you're fragile. I, I'm going to say this, but this might be one of the things that bothers me most in the entire game. Um, a zero level character is fragile. GM should see the gauntlet on page 116 for more insight on how to run zero level characters. Though it's just, it's a funnel. It's a, the word funnel, it's a funnel. exists. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's exists for decades. I don't like that they want, they like, they rebranded it to the gauntlet. Like, yeah, just what's call that, it a funnel. Uh, what's that rule that uh, somebody else made? And I just, I always quote it, like, call a thing what it is, you know? Yeah. And game call design. a thing a thing. Yeah. Like literally just call the thing a thing. Um, so I don't like that it was rebranded because here's the thing is like if this book where I feel like its place is 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 a good stepping stone away from 5e. And I think it's also going to be a decent stepping stone into more of the OSR scene. It feels like yes. a bridge to me. It feels like a yes. bridge. Call the thing a thing so that people can cross a bridge because they're going to think it's a gauntlet and then they're going to read a funnel and go, oh, wait, what? You know what I mean? Just call it a funnel. And then people can just search for funnels and find funnels. Well, and then, right? Yeah, exactly. And then moving forward, they just are know like, okay, well, we're going to run a funnel. Um, yeah. I love so, a good funnel adventure. Yeah. So there's two different ways to do this. And I think it's interesting that they did it. I don't have an opinion either way on whether I like it or not. So if you're a zero level character, right, you start with a thing called beginner's luck and you can wield all gear until first level because basically you're just swinging with hope, right? And there is a complete breakdown of like what you get or what you start with. Uh, stats, a choice of ancestry, hit points, background, alignment, starting gear, um, with page numbers for each of those sections, which are hyperlinked. Uh, seriously, good, good job. Um, yeah, great job. And then, um, and that's on one side of the page, and it says zero level characters reach first after they survive their first adventure. Great. And then on the other side of the page is first level characters and everything that you get, which is what we just talked about before: stats, ancestry, class. Um, one talent roll, you figure out your HP, you get a background, you get an alignment, you get a title, and you get your starting gear. I like the way this page is broken down. I think it's a great explainer. Um, yeah. I kind of like beginner's luck. I do. I love it. I think it's fine. I, I don't I, have any I issue think, with this except the words the gauntlet. Yeah, I think I well, I think the first time I went through this, I didn't love it now because I'm like, I'm like, I don't know. I'm try it's not that I try to be punishing on my my player characters, but like, you know. I do. Um yeah. but I really like that. It's like, you know, you can really adjust like, yeah, pick up, pick up whatever and swing it and see how you feel about it. And then, yeah. you know, later, when you level up, it's like pick, you know? Yeah. And I, I like that. I think it's fine. I Because, again, I, I try to look at this through a lens of I genuinely think the majority of the 13,000 people that back this have only played 5e. I'm going to be honest. Yeah. Like, I don't think a ton of people that are super deep in the OSR are picking this up. You know what I mean? Like, I do like that it is a bridge, and I think that if you are as brutal as, like, DCC in a funnel adventure, that is off-putting to people that don't already, or totally. that, you bet. that have that have a different context. If you've never done a game, and then you go into a DCC funnel, and that's, like, kind of your early experience, that's mm -hmm. what you know as an experience. But if you play 5e where it's impossible to die, and then suddenly you're thrown into a DCC funnel, I think there's going to be a thing in your head that goes, why is this so hard? You know what I mean? Like, I, I, like just that took a, I just took a group of people that were, like, have only played OSR and half have played D and D before through a funnel adventure, and all the two D and D guys were like, "Good, this is." And like, I prepped them beforehand. I was like, "Hey, I was like, it, you're gonna die a bunch, so try to make it like the most ridiculous death you can." And they, they could not hang. 
The other two were like, yeah, that's fucking hilarious. Um, but yeah, I think that that's an incredibly valid point. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, 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 I just think, I think <clears throat> again, I, I try to look through this lens as a middle ground and I think they do succeed at making a middle ground. It's just, you know, you know, both of us, like I would, I just want to, I just want to go harder, but I, that's not the purpose of this game. I don't think. Right. Um, uh, or it's, it's not. So, um, so, uh, stats is the first thing we do for your character, right? So stats, it's the standard six, right? Strength, dex, con, intelligence, wisdom, charisma. You know what they all do. We don't need to talk about them. So determine your character stats. Roll 3d6 in order for each one. Uh, note each total of modifier on your character sheet. Optionally, if none of your stats are 14 or higher, you may roll a new set of six numbers. So this is a standard 3d6 straight down. Um, and, and you do your thing. So let's do it the way that... It. Yeah, do it the way that they tell you to do it. So strength first. 15. This is fighting and all that kind of stuff. So 15 and your modifier is a plus two, right? So there's stats and there's modifiers. It's the thing I hate most about D20 rollover. It is Just the roll thing the I hate the most about D20 yeah. rollover as well. Yeah. Um, so uh, one to three is a minus four. And if your stats all the way up to an 18 plus, it's a plus four. So next is your decks and that shooting a bow and balancing and flipping and all that kind of stuff. What did you get? Z uh, 10, so zero, I assume. 10 yeah, to zero, yep. And then I didn't, even, I didn't even look. I just like, I know how this works. <laughs> That's yeah. so funny. It's like, so, it's so ingrained. I'm just like, I know how this yeah. works. Yeah, so 10, 10 is considered average. You start your minuses at 8 to 9, and then every 2, you add 1 as you go up. So 12 to 13 is plus 1, 14 to 15 plus 2, et cetera, et cetera. So what did you get for con? 14. So plus 2. Plus 2. All right. Intelligence? I got a 7, so a minus 2. Damn, um, a, you ain't playing a wizard. A dumbass. You ain't playing a wizard. <laughs> uh, wisdom. So, so intelligence is wizard spells and being smart. Um, wisdom is pre spells and 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 um, like street smart stuff. I got so a wisdom. thirteen. So was that plus one? Plus one. Yep. And then charisma. Uh, and cha, uh, cha. One more Some roll. Cha. Um, I got. <laughs> I got. I got an eight. Um, Dope. So, so you are. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, you're fucking just a, a dumb. <laughs> Listen, like, I'm very your strong. Mouth. I have a good con. Um, yeah, I am very wise, but incredibly dumb and unlikable. Um, yeah, so you're you're dumb, unlikable with street smarts. I think that's pretty much yeah. where you're at. There is there is actually a, a page of art in the text on this page. Rare, but yes. there is a thief climbing a wall. So there's there. Love so that. that's what we, we started a thief with. Climbing a wall. Who doesn't? Um, so you start with um, stats. The next you go to is ancestry. So ancestries are like we said. It's just the basic races. Like uh, the fact that they call it ancestry and try to pretend that there's a culture to it. You're just like you're just you're just just call a horse a horse. Like if you're gonna use races, it's fine that people don't like the word races and want to call it ancestries instead. If you're gonna go old school vibe, I guess you need this in there. That's fine. It's basic. There's dwarfs, there's elves, there's goblins, there's half orcs, there's halflings, and there's humans. Everyone has a little descriptor. How do you feel language. about uh, like the OSC approach and like it's not the OSC. I think it's older than that. But like the whole like race as class. You're the party elf. You're like the elf. You know, that's your class as elf, you know? It's interesting. I've never, I know it. I've read it. I've never played it. Mm. Um, are we talking from like a socially acceptable standpoint? Yeah. I'm going to say, I don't know why I feel like in my head, in my heart, that I kind of like that better. It, I, I don't know why either, but I also like, and please, if you're listening to this, feel free to disagree and send us what your thoughts are because I I would listen um, but I also weirdly feel better about that. <laughs> yeah. Like, I mean, like you're if if you're going to be like so culturally and um, and like physically or whatever different, then I feel like you should play into that entirely. Not like ha like dip a toe. You know what I'm See, saying? I just think, I, I think it's that like because it's a class, it makes it completely fair and even because all of the classes have ups and downs and like positive and negative and it has nothing to do with like you know the how your your birth um yeah. right like but okay point yeah. being moving forward i just that was more a question for me um and once yeah. again no i I, I, I don't know why i feel like i like that better but yeah so basically every every mm -hmm. one of these quote-unquote ancestries even though it talks about like this is your culture too where does it talk about that like when you look at this like where is culture brought into this oh it oh I didn't even realize that because it says it earlier. 
Um, it says this is your and this is your your. I guess your... it's like the like dwarfs are star uh, stalwart folk. Uh, as sturdy as the stone kingdoms they carve inside mountains. Just in case you didn't know. Uh... <laughs> Again, I feel like if you're if you're gonna if you're gonna if you're gonna say like if you're gonna try to like bring the concept of ancestry in and really bring like culture and stuff and separate it from the concept of race, all they did was all they they didn't do anything different. They just called race ancestry and then just did the race stuff anyway. So yeah. like they just renamed it. They didn't fix the 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 issue oh, that people have with it. You mean species? <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. I mean that's what it comes down to. So so each one gets one thing. So like dwarves get stout, like elves get farsight, half orcs are mighty. It's like it's 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 classic and basic and fine. So what are you picking? Oh fuck. I forgot I'm making a character. Um <laughs> Let's see. Um, I'm going to go as a goblin. Okay. So green, clever beings who thrive in dark, uh, cramped places as fierce as they are tiny, you know, goblin and goblin, and you can't be surprised. So I'm reading, I'm reading the, the Black Tongue Thief right now. Um, and it's there you go. about a world right after the Goblin War. Pretty good. There you go. Uh, there's a little blurb here at the bottom that, that gives a tiny bit of setting, I guess. At the end of the Primordial Age, mortals rose up. And that's fine. Uh, there's also halflings and humans. Um, human is ambitious. Uh, you're bold, adaptable, and diverse people who learn quickly and accomplish mighty deeds. You know the common language and one additional common language. You gain one additional talent role at first level. I mean, let's come on. You call it ancestry and then you made humans as problematic as you possibly could. Like, <laughs> like... They are the ones that accomplish mighty deeds, and they are ambitious and get more talents than everybody else. I mean, come on. Um, there is a uh, great piece of art here at the bottom in a tavern with a bunch of different, with with all of the goblins, dwarves, <laughs> everything. Um, basically, all of the quote unquote ancestries are on the page. Um, Still it's like fine. The art, so, though. yeah, the art's great. So, um, then you're going to pick a class. We don't need to go over all of the individual classes. Um, let's just go through the one class that you would pick. Um, so, the classes are, and I'm just going to look at the bookmark for this. Um, uh, there's only four. They try to go old four. school with, yeah. yeah. They try to go old school with that, and I like that because um, I think the classes as archetypes is a better idea than a million fucking classes. Like oh, honestly, man. I love paladins, but paladins aren't a necessary class in fifth edition. Like, um, they could just be lumped in with clerics as a subclass, and it would be fine. So, uh, fighter, uh, super classic priest, um, and then you got the uh, thief. And then you have the wizard. Standard four classes, perfect. You don't need to do anything different. If you're playing a Western fantasy D20 rollover, that's what that's that's what you need. So what are you going with? Um, you know, we're gonna break the mold tonight. Uh we're gonna go with a thief. Thief, man. Ooh. <laughs> well, you didn't really roll for wizard. I know that you really wanted to, but oh, you didn't that's really... right. Hold on. I have a high strength. Let's go fighter. Goblin fighter. Okay. All right. Um, so we'll roll back up. I do love, um, the layout parts in here where like after each class, they give you a full page piece of art again. Like I think the lack of art on the pages is really made up for with like full page art constantly throughout the book. Um, so fighter blood, so gladiators and dented armor, acrobatic duelists with darting swords or far eyed elven archers who carve their legends with steel and grit. Um, uh, you get all weapons, you get all armor, you get 1d8 per level hit points, um, you get hauler, which means you add your constitution mod if positive to your gear slots. They did inventory better, we'll get to that. Weapon mastery, you choose one type of weapon, such as long swords, you gain plus one to attack and damage with that weapon. In addition, add half your level to these rolls rounded down. And then you get grit, you choose strength or dex. You have advantage on checks of that type to overcome an opposing force, such as kicking open a stuck door, which is strength or slipping free of rusty chains. So what what are we doing here? So one D8 per level, we're starting at first level, roll a D8. Two. <laughs> Dope. Okay. Um, you add your con modifier to your gear slots. So what's your con mod? Plus two. So you get you get to you're 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 strong. You carry a bunch of shit. Um, uh, choose a weapon type. What are you gonna go with? Um. Uh, what are the weapon types? It's just 
Uh, it's a it's a very top. I'm pretty sure. I think it just means oh, like it, a yeah, long yeah. sword, a an axe. Like, um, I'm gonna go with a javelin. Interesting. And that's oh, an interesting a take. A spear. Okay. Okay. Um, and so you get plus one to attack and damage with all of your spears. In addition, add half your level to these rolls rounded down. So you get another one. So that means like at level five, you get plus three to all attacks. Interesting. Um, and then I assume you're going to choose strength for your grit. Yes. Yeah. So anytime you're doing, it says, I like, I kind of like this overcoming an opposing force. So basically, if you're trying to push something, kick something, like you're trying to do something where like you're overcoming something, I, I like that. I think it's interesting. Um, yeah, and then I get you, very cool. And then you get a uh, you get a fighter talent, so you get to roll two d six. I and you know I love a two d six. That means they really want you to get that plus two to strength because that seven to nine. That's the sweet spot on on the bell curve. Well, guess what I got? Uh, three. Seven. Oh, oh, oh. The exact what I just said. Yeah. So plus yeah, two to strength saying, dex. Like, yeah. Plus two to strength dex or con. Uh, oh, I think we're taking it to con. Con's going to become a 17, which makes it a plus three? Plus four. There you go. Four. Yeah. Yeah. So then, I mean, you're, you're going to be hauling shit. Yeah. Um, there are, uh, at the bottom of here, it says nothing. Uh, I have the sinks. buffest fucking goblin you've ever seen. Oh, like, bro. Bro. <laughs> I'm like <laughs> you're a fucking meatball you are a tank um, um, yeah. <laughs> a five foot tank um, nothing sings sweeter than a whistling axe Jorbin dwarf fighter bunch of quotes from dwarf Jorbin in here um, so yeah then a great pe honestly this could be you because this is the goblin am I wrong no that's an orc for sure oh you're right that Honro is an orc yeah 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 um, great piece of art though I love this one specifically um there's the priest. You pick a deity. They have some spell casting. They got turn undead. Classic, regular stuff. Their seven to nine is just plus two to spells. It's fine. Um, uh, so priests Whoa, and <laughs> yeah, priests and wizards both have uh, magic casting in this. Wizards just have a little bit more. There's no like half caster. Yeah. There's no nothing. I think it's like one more of everything, pretty much. Um, so there are priesty spells. Um, the thief, you get backstab, which is basically when you have um, uh, when you attack a creature unaware, add an extra weapon die um, and add additional weapon dice of damage equal to half your level. So there's consistency in the way that they they give each class their like little bonus, right? So you have your weapon mastery, you get to add a, a plus one plus like half your level. Backstab gets to add damage plus like half their level. I like that there's consistency through, through the way the classes feel relatively well balanced, which I don't yeah. think is necessary at all. But like, but it's, it's fine. I mean, like, I like asymmetric classes when they exist when they're done well. Um, I think the Electrum Archive is a really great example. Um, and I like classes that when you play across the game, you're like, hey, this is the same game. Um, yeah. it feels like the same game. Um, just yeah, different. Yeah, but I also have no problem with the, with with the, with the consistency to the mechanics or that they chose to do these. I think they're fine. I think they're. No, that's again, what I'm saying. I, like, I like when it's like I like both. I do like when it's consistent. You know, yeah. like. Yeah, I think this is again. This is fine. This is it. It works. It's like again. If you've read any version of D and D and you've played any version of a dungeon game, dungeon game again, none of this is new or different for you. You're gonna read this and go, "Yep, okay, yep, okay, makes sense, right?" The whole as I was reading this, I was like, "Yep, yep, yep, yeah, yep. totally." Like, yeah, uh, again, great piece of thief art. Wizard, you get to learn spells, you get to learn languages. You have a D four per level of hit points, which honestly, you rolled a two, so you're not yeah. really doing any better there. <laughs> Might as well be a wizard um, again. <laughs> and here's a here's the, that's a goblin wizard for for one hundo on that page, right? Yeah. Yeah. Right? Am I wrong? That's yeah. yeah no, that right? definitely is a goblin wizard. Yeah. I was thinking. I'm sorry. I was thinking that my stats for intelligence are like a negative. <laughs> so I should just pick the wizard and be like, yeah, "You're a fucking idiot. Like you're the dumbest yeah. wizard on earth." The uh, that see, I love that. That's a great way to roll flaws and stuff. That's that yeah. would have been awesome. Um, also, you can tell. You can see right off the bat. You only go to level ten, which thank God because honestly, no one ever plays past eleven anyway. No one ever unnecessary. plays past. People don't play past five. <laughs> I mean, that's very true. You start at three and play to five, and then you stop playing. Um. I like that it goes to the, to that again. Talents for everything. Then you get to pick a background. Backgrounds are fine. I I think these are pretty much just narrative. 
Um, your background knowledge and skills might prove useful. Work with the Gia to determine if your background provides you advantages in a given situation. Yeah, do they or don't they? Just say. Like, if you say, hey. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, work with the Gia and determine if it does. Just say. Like your GM, like you get advantage in certain situations based on your background. The GM will right. tell you when is very different than work with your GM to determine if it provides you advantage. Like, I feel like what it's saying is you can get advantage for this, but I feel you like just you want can also more read definite it. language in that in that part right there. It's very wishy washy because it's just like, so then do I can I get advantage or do I have to ask the GM if that's an option? You know what I mean? So anyway, roll a D20, son. Wow. Roll a d20. Story of my life. I rolled a 19. Yo. <laughs> I am a noble goblin warrior. <laughs> you, are a, you are a dumb as fuck, swole as shit, noble goblin <laughs> warrior. Um, and your famous, your famous name has opened many doors for you. Good job. Um, alignment. I hate it. Oh, I don't see, mind their version. This is where I don't I, mind their version. I like alignment. So I think I think I think the nine alignments is fucking dumb. Yeah. I don't mind this. It literally is three because that's all you fucking need. Yeah. And I like the way that they describe it a lot better. Um, chaotic, lawful and neutral because everyone in their fucking mom just goes, I'm chaotic, neutral. I can do whatever I want, whenever I want that. You're not you're that's the most. Like basic yeah, dumb, it's very very like, you know. un choice you ever make. So I I like that this def it says it defines your role in the clash versus good and evil. It breaks it down into three things: law, which is benevolence; chaos, which is malevolence; and neutrality, which is right down the middle. I don't I like this much better, and I I it's I I just find it better. I I like the concept of like chaos and law more than like good and evil you know I, what I, mean? I really like chaos and law um mm -hmm. and i like both of them being evil um because they oh both my are, God. are can be lawful uh, if i if i was let's say i was a super powerful wizard in fucking dnd &D world i'd be a lawful evil as fuck yeah i absolutely. can tell you right now if i had power dumb motherfuckers are getting blasted just all the time <laughs> Like if you're like if you're holding up the line at the airport, fireball. Like Dunzo, you know. Um. Anyway, so that's great. Uh, DDs, I'm fine with these. I think they're. I think again, this is almost all just. Uh, it's it's all narrative. It's interesting that they decided to throw in like what amounts to like kind of setting information, but like this is kind of it. I think in yeah. like the expanded, like the Curse Scroll stuff, some of the some of the expanded Shadow Dark stuff. There's more setting stuff, so it's interesting. But it's basically just a big list of, of deities. Um, the the Dark Trio, the Lost, I think the way that they did it is cool. I think whoever wrote the narratives for this are fine. When I read them, I thought they were interesting. I thought they were cool. I thought they were serviceable. I have no issues with any of these. Perfect. What are your thoughts? Oh, yeah. what do you, am I picking a deity for my guy? No, you don't have to, just in general. Like when you did you read the deities? I, it's it's fine. It's fine. They're fine. Starts, They're fine. fine. Yeah. yeah. Um, cool. Yeah. All right. I uh, was not uh, that the, the art piece on here though. Wait, hold on. Now art piece though with like one, the sacrificial knife, knife, knife oh, held the over, the like, in the moon. Yeah. 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 That, that's that's this a, art piece that, fucks tremendously. <laughs> yeah. That's a that's a thick delver, and I don't know what they're sacrificing because there's nothing on that table, but it's a cool piece of art. Yeah. I great love piece. it. Yeah. This, you know what? I don't know why. This, what immediately pops in my head is like Cersei victory, because like a lot of Cersei, a, a lot of his stuff is like personally, and maybe I'm wrong. From the back, I see this as as, as, as probably a female adventurer, um, cool. and if not, this dude's got junk in the trunk. Um, but uh, a lot of their stuff, like you know, he writes as he writes, you know, a lot of the adventures and, and language from her and stuff like that. Like yeah, you know, totally. flips the the pro news, which is great, and a lot of the art pieces he has is like female rogue doing stuff. Um, Monty this Cook Games says that as well. It's a lot. Yeah, of, I uh, think it's fine. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's so much in the opposite. Like why, why, who, like why wouldn't you? Who cares? You know, yeah. like who cares? it's good. Yeah. But this piece, when I saw it, immediately made me go. I can see this on the cover of like a Cersei, a Cersei adventure. Yeah, um, totally. Shout out Cersei. Uh, yeah, Cersei. Shout out Cersei. Rocking that Cersei. Damn, I, I, I should have. I don't know where my Cersei victory shirt is. I bet it's just hanging up, honestly, with mm -hmm. my fifty of the black shirts. Um, yeah, right. Titles. Okay. Titles are interesting. Tell me about titles. 
titles are for there. You, you know, I, I think it's interesting that they level up with you. That's pretty mm-hmm. cool, right? Mm-hmm. Um, a level like for my fighter, the famous squire, uh, Baba Klin, uh, the uh, super buff, dumb fighting um, goblin. Um, yeah, it's cool that they have it divided up. Um, you know, I don't know when I would really reference this at the table. Maybe you know, I would. Here's the thing. As I, I have talked to Sursa a lot. Sir, it, listen, real quick shout out. If you don't know Sursa Victory, uh, go check out. Fuck just you. search Sursa <laughs> Victory. Go to their itch page. They have a lot of fucking st- amazing stuff. We're going to talk about them more towards the end with some more Shadow Dark stuff like that. But amazing game designer. Amazing. Like just a, a just a, a font of game knowledge. And yeah. one of the things we recently talked about was things that you... Um, get as rewards and one of the things that you, that is considered a reward is like titles and glory so mm. when you can um when you're gifted something that makes you go i sound fucking cool now right. i think uh, yeah i love but this is here's not the thing. that for me though no you know? well here's here's my problem with this is it's not that it exists it's not that because it says as you gain levels your title changes to reflect your increase in fame or infamy your legend precedes you here's a title my problem is all of the words that they use at the bottom all of them they just the the sorest the word fighter and slapped them all in here because to me you know it's one to two three to four five to six seven eight nine to ten right i look at neutral all the way to the right okay and in order those like one two three four five things whatever it's warrior barbarian battle rager war chief and chieftain okay four of those to me right are incongruent they, they are separate classes there are subclasses they're not an advancement of a warrior you know what i mean like when you look at lawful squire to cavalier to knight to faint there's a bit of an actual like progression to it that's very true yeah yeah but in in the same thing with with chaotic (laughs) knave bandit slayer reaver warlord i feel like there's a progression to it the neutral ones all just sound like different types of fighters (laughs) So like I feel like there's a little bit of a of a lack or a loss, huh. and I I didn't even realize that. What... But now that you're pointing it out, I'm like, oh yeah, you were right. For me personally, it's just like if you're gonna give them titles, give them titles based on achievements. You know, like mm-hmm. you're so and so, um, the the killer of the Dunwich Horror or whatever. You know, like yeah. the Slayer yeah. of the Dunwich Horror or like Savior of the Realm or what the, whatever. But like, do it based on like. The things that they do and obtain and yeah. are ma- master of the orb of Pontorus, you know, or whatever. Yeah, I, I completely hear where you're coming from. I think it's just a, I think it's just a, a, a different. I think the word title is the problem. You know, what yeah. I mean, like Maybe I, it is the I, problem. I think if it wasn't called title, because I, when I think title, I think the same as you. I think I want to be Boblin, the Swole Goblin, Master of the, <laughs> you know, whatever, the Three Rivers or some shit. You know what I mean? Like, that's a title <laughs> to me. I want to list at the end so when the dude comes out with a parchment, it takes yes, like five totally. minutes to that's, read it. That's 100% where I am. So uh, these don't, and I don't, I can't think of the word that I would use for this instead, because I don't feel like that's what this is. Yeah. Um, or at least... Were- the explanation and then what the oh, words oh. they use for it feels incongruous to me. Yeah, there's something. But what would you what would you call besides title? Like this is more like because it's not achievements. It's not like they're not going to be like you're bobbling. I don't think the renown now. is the right word. Um, no. But I don't know. I don't know. Um, yeah, I don't know. But, I don't know, but I, I don't this. I like the concept. I don't necessarily like the way that they present it. I think it's fine. I don't think people are going to be as picky as, as we are about it. But I do. I prefer we exactly the way you picky, said. So I, yeah, it's fine. We're allowed to be. It's our podcast. I know you um, yeah, you read you read about 150 of these things and you're like, I have opinions now. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. But like the other thing, too, is like when you look at some of the other ones, like when you look at like Thief, right? Like robber, outlaw, rogue, renegade, bandit, king. I'm fine with that. There's a progression, right? But when you look at something like footpad, burglar, rook, underboss, boss, there's a bit of a progression there. Thug, cutthroat, right. shadow, assassin, wraith. Like I feel like I don't know. Some of these have that. Some of them don't. Like shaman, so fi- seer, neutral just kind of got fucked over. Yeah, but I mean, look at the wizard neutral too. Shaman, yeah. seer, warden, sage, druid. There's no progression. Those are five completely different things. So, like, I just felt like there was a little bit of, like, I, I, I like what they were trying to do. I just don't necessarily like the execution yeah, wait, for this. Wouldn't Sage be 
greater than druid like wouldn't that be you wouldn't think, you be a druid and then I mean, be a sage yeah so like yeah i mean and but like when you look at lawful apprentice conjurer arcanist mage archmage honestly what's the difference between a conjurer or an arcanist and a mage like apprentice i get archmage i get what are the difference between the middle three you know what i mean so i guess like again i like the concept i don't like how it works i would probably wouldn't even use this like i this is just right. something i would i would drop um languages they exist who cares there are languages yep yep starting here in AC. all the languages you would think are here <laughs> are, are here <laughs> once again it's pretty basic if you've played a dungeon game 80 percent of this you already fucking know like there's it's 80 percent of it is not new to anyone um so starting gear so how many gear slots do you get because you're uh, you have a million fucking con Oh, what is it for? Um... Uh, starting gear, zero level characters start with 1d4 of the following items. Um, uh, where's the first level character one? Uh, I'm going to go up to gear the gear slots. Slot. Yeah, you can carry a number of items equal to your strength stat or 10, whichever is higher. I don't like that. Let people have bad stuff. Um, you can't have less than 10. I don't, I don't like that. Mm -hmm. um i get why it's in this game like again this is like osr light right like this isn't yeah. punishing at all but it's got the concepts of punishment in it you know what i mean um they threaten to beat you with the belt you never really get hit with the belt yeah um, so i have so, a, i think i get plus two as well from being a fighter um so i uh -huh. have 19 inventory slots bro this is why you're a swole because you're just carrying so much shit i just he always has so much on his person that he just gets yeah. stronger um, yep. uh your calves are fucking bulging yeah, massive. Um, <laughs> unless noted all gear besides typical clothing fills one gear slot um right. gear that is hard to transport may fill more than one i so gear slots thoughts good great so good totally fine. so good i think it's all yeah. personally that's for me 19 gear slots is too many yes 100 um, percent. Your, half of your strength um, yes. So here's the pro here's what I what I love and don't love. One, love the idea of gear slots because I can totally. tell you in every fucking game of five e I ever ran within the first three sessions they find a bag of holding. So a bag I don't of have to worry about that shit yeah, anymore. I don't want to talk about this. I don't want to talk about this anymore. He's a bag of holding. Whatever. I don't care. Yeah. <laughs> every person is carrying three hundred pounds of shit on them, and no one worries about encumbrance. What the fuck? I I love inventory systems. Gear slots are the perfect way to do shit. You are a hundred percent right. It's too much shit still. The the whole point was to simplify inventory and then you give people 20 fucking things to carry i anyway. know that's you didn't like, fix anything bro fuck i don't know but yeah i got 20 things in here i'm writing really small on my character sheet um yeah. because i have so many things in my fucking inventory so. it's it, like it, i like the attempt to fix it but i don't think it really fixed the issue so gear slots are better than a bag full of shit with weight so glad right. there's not weight in here but again too many too many slots um, so you you get to start with a bunch of a bunch of gear. Um, so zero level characters start with one d four. I think there's a separate page for what first level characters get. Um, but why don't you just roll one d four d twelves or just like it's just basic shit. I mean, you, if you want to, you absolutely can. But you can literally carry every one of these twelve things because you have nineteen slots. I could, yeah, and I'd still so, have seven slots left, man. Yeah, um, and it's basic adventuring gear. It's torch, dagger, so um, arrows, rope. You know. So if you're a first level character, uh, you're going to start with 2d6 times 5 gold pieces to buy gear. Oh, there you go. Yeah. See gear page 34. Yeah. All we have to do is uh, read a little farther. Um, again, maybe there maybe there is a little bit more art on some of these pages in the pages than I thought there was because there's yet another one. Um, I got 55 gold. Nice. And you can carry a million things. Um, so and then your AC um holy uh, shit your armor 55 class. gold nothing costs anything in this so it's like yeah i've got i got five mirrors <laughs> uh, um your ac is 10 plus your deck so we're doing ascending standard ass uh, ac right. 10 plus decks what's your decks uh it's a uh, it's zero <laughs> so 10 uh yeah. wearing armor changes your ac it's standard like it's it, like it's 10 plus dex plus plus ac uh there's a list here of gear arrows lanterns basic shit um and then there is a a, a page of what it is what it costs and how many slots it has which is fine almost everything is one almost everything is one and i like that that's fine like 
Yeah, it's um, weapons and armor become a little bit more expensive. But um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, all the basic stuff is like, yeah, it's one. You know, it's literally like, one, which is fine. Perfect. Fine. Yeah. Bro, when 5e like has like such a massive fucking gear list and then you like you figure out kind of like how how the, the gold standard works and you go a shovel costs two hundred dollars. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like what the fuck? <laughs> like this doesn't work. I like this. I think this is fine. I love the whole way that they do gear for the most part. You know I I hate list of costs. The fact that everything is like five or less speaks to me just fine. This is a simplified way to do it all. Yeah. The only issue I really have with the entire gear slot system is it's you have too many fucking slots. Yeah. Because that is like it's too many. It's way too it's many, in, man. It's impossible to start with less than ten. Impossible to start with less than ten. Yeah. Because and also it like, says I like the idea of it being limited. Um, I think limitations like give you a lot of fun. Um, you're just like, fuck, I can only bring so many things. It's like, well, I'm going to bring a bag of Caltrops. Um, yes. And then because I know I only have like five things with me, and one of those bag of Caltrops is like, oh, perfect. We're being chased. I'm going to throw them back. Because, you know, a lot of the problem with D&D and like uh, and when you have a lot of stuff in your inventory is you might have really usable, clever, like stuff to be clever with, and you'll never use it because you have no idea what's what because you have. Because you have to flip three pages to see what you yeah. fucking have. The number of times people are like, wait a minute, like, oh shit, remember that like 50 like t-shirts we got like six months ago? Let's just dump those. Like, who gives a fuck? Um, but uh again, like I don't like that it is uh strength, whatever, or or ten, whichever's higher. I, I like you just said the whole the, the whole concept of shadow dark you're going to scary dark places you shouldn't have uh you, it shouldn't be the beginning of fucking monty python where the yeah. dude has a backpack up to the top they're like you know clicking clicking clacking the clack way you know um but yeah um I, I i i don't mind this crawling kit situation i hate what we'll get to in a second i hate the whole crawling thing um it costs 7 GP, uses 7 gear slots, and contains the following items. Literally, all of this shit. 7 GP. So you 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 still get 3 on top of this. Backpack, flint and steel, torch, rations, iron spikes, grappling hook, rope. That's fine. That's fine. And it's 7 GP, even though the total cost of it's, what, like 20-ish? Fine. I, it's cool. Good. I like that. Really? Armor, leather, chain, plate. Even then, like, leather armor is only 10 GP. You, what, you, would you start with 55? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and again, this is basic as shit. 11, 13, 15, yeah, some uh, decks, some don't. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, the, the penalties to swimming, disadvantage to stealth, it's fine. It's, it's, it's the way that everything fucking works. List of weapons, more so than I think in the beginning, whatever. Cost, type, range, damage, properties. Pretty basic variants of all of that shit. It's, yeah. if you've read a dungeon game, you know how it works. You know how Versatile works. You know how Throne works. You know oh, how all that shit works. there is a character name generator. Well, we're going to have to I do told it. you there was. Yeah. You I know. To go I to the earlier, though. So you're, so you're a gob. You're a, you're a little gobby boy. It's a D20. Uh, 7. Uh, 17, I am, wait, uh, Fink. Um, Fink. Fink. Nice. You are no sur Fink. No surname? Okay, well, it'll just be Fink. Well, just roll roll another one and just be two, two of those things. I rolled a 17 again. So you're Fink Fink. I'm Love Fink it. Fink. You are Fink Fink. Uh, <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> yeah. Uh, level advancement. Um, this is pretty straightforward experience. You get XP uh, from doing stuff. XP is based on the quality of the treasure and boons you gain during a session. GMs should be awarding XP, uh, and there's a, a sheet for guidance. So straight up, XP is gold. Am I wrong? Uh, treasure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah. I like that. I like. I like that. Like I, I like that. It's totally fine for me. Uh, the, to gain a level, you need to earn your current level times 10 XP. Once you reach a new level, your total XP resets back to zero. You get any new titles. You get but any... It's, it's interesting that it's... It's XP awards are based on the quality of the treasure and boons you gain during a session, but it's not X amount of gold. No, it's just... Um, it, it's just a... Well, I, what I said, it's a quality of all the shit that you bring back. Like, it's not yeah. just like 50 gold pieces. Because uh, I don't mind that because it basically, like, it makes you where you don't have to sit down and go, like, here's 50 gold plus 10 gems plus this and that. Yeah. Like, it kind of it kind of makes it a little bit easier. And I do like the idea. I, I love this part where it says, um, 
Uh, to gain a level, you need to earn your current level times 10. Once you reach a new level, your total XP resets back to zero. So like, I, I do uh, like one, that. yeah, level up at 10 XP. To get yeah, to I do like two, that because I do hate when XP. I read a game that has XP and it's like, yeah, for level 10, it's 10,000 XP. It's like, you're a dick. Just let it, yeah. Yeah, but reset then level 11, level. it's like... But re but for level eleven you have to get to thirteen thousand three hundred and seventy two. Like yeah. fuck off. <laughs> like the XP chart in five E is one of the stupidest fucking things I've ever yeah. seen. That's exactly um, what I'm thinking about. In this one, it's literally ten levels, right? And then you level up it, and guess what? At 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. Oh, wait a minute. At 10, it's 100. It, it's just, it just progressively gets to do more, and that's yes. how it should be, and it's fine. And then basically every other level you get to add another talent. That's it. That's advancement. I, you know what? That's one. Of, that's fantastic. Stop giving people a million fucking things. Yeah. Did so, we miss talents? No, you rolled one. You got uh, your your quote unquote talent was your increased strength. Oh, that's right. Oh, you that's get to right. just roll or, another. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cool. You gain one roll on your class's talent table when you reach the indicated levels. Duplicate talents stack. You you get end up with like plus six strength. Like that gets to be oh, ridiculous. I don't like really? that. Really. Not a fan. That Not a fan. I mean, especially since it's two d six, and we know it's going to favor uh, the, the middle, Yeah, the middle of that bell curve. Um, wow. You could roll a you could roll a seven and nine every time. Well, if you're, and end if up... you're a human, which you immediately at level one get another talent. Yeah, you could immediately get plus four. <laughs> yeah, to a you, you know, like thirty strength. Yeah, like but the thing is like there's nothing that talks about going over plus four. Like that I maybe maybe I missed it, but like what's the point of having twenty four? I would just keep adding the numbers. Like because that's how math works. Every two you just get another one. Right? Yeah. Um so yeah and then increase HP, roll your classes hit points die and add it to your maximum HP. You know what one of my favorite things about the level advancement system in this entire is? What? If it's on one fucking page. Yeah, it's pretty nice. So I don't need all this shit. I don't need a million subclasses. I don't need all of that bullshit. Like, I will say this is extremely simplified compared to 5e for character generation. Um, and I do like that. I know that yeah. a lot of people love a million fucking fighter subclasses because it's super easy to build a cleric. You know what I mean? But like, I do like that they super simplified it and it makes it easy. And I do love the next section too. Random characters use these tables to randomly generate zero I or did like this characters. Part too. Yeah. Oh, I Lovely. do like this. Yes, yeah. this was a so good, good part. Like, and again, you know, I do like you know, if, you, if you die, uh, which is possible in this game. Um, you're just like, all right, cool, whatever. Just do this real quick, you know. Roll or you got, you're you're yeah. going through a a, a uh, what they call a funnel in this uh, gauntlet. A gauntlet, you know. You either blow yeah. up another gauntlet character. Yeah, cool. Yeah, that's it. Uh, I do like a lot of the time they they constantly reference back to other stuff. Roll your stats. It gives you the stat hyperlink uh, and the page number, background, talents. Like every time you need it, I feel like they do throw it in there. Like the layout on this, like as far as like navigability, they did a really fucking good job. They did job. a really that's, really good job. Definitely. Yeah, really fantastic. They, look at this wizard art here, dude. I, yes, like, this wizard art. Yeah, there's a lot of really good art in this. Uh, yeah. It's got that good old school dungeon feel without having too much of an old school like <laughs> like you know the yeah. old school arts does not hold up very well it kind of looks like crap now but uh yeah, yeah it's great i just feel like there is an actual style to this which i enjoy because listen fifth edition art listen it's pretty it's the same every it's fucking pretty. piece it's way too pretty it's way every too clean fucking fantasy. piece i'm looking yeah. for some dungeon punk art you know yes Every fucking piece just looks like someone did some concept art and procreate. Like every fucking piece. Like you like if you look at every piece of art in the 5e book, it looks like it's been done by the same fucking person. Yeah. So um magic. Do you have a lot to say about magic? Uh it's a like Vancian casting system. Um with That's spell it. slots and yeah, I mean, it is exactly the reason that i i looked for a different games to play from 5e because i was like man you know what being a wizard in 5e and D is not satisfying um mm. so it's fun it's cool um yeah. i do like there's a couple tables where it's like mishaps um mm -hmm. and they're tiered um yeah. yeah they're great and i like the fact that like as the it gets more powerful, the t what can go wrong also gets worse. And like, actually, it's probably my favorite part of the casting system altogether mm -hmm. is that like, if I go balls to the wall and throw everything at the enemy, and I 
roll and I, and I fuck up I misfire and I have to roll on the mishap uh you know it's good it's yeah. good yeah it's really good um I think that one thing I noticed on them is uh, and I only went through them like once or twice really quickly uh is that I kind of wish there were worse options you know yeah um, again it's the it, it's the concepts of punishment without being punishing yeah like shred right so I roll a 12 on the tier five mishap table, you tear a what large. Page, what page are you on, real quick? Sorry. Forty-eight. <clears throat> okay. Shred. Um, you tear a large hole in the fabric of the universe close to you. Um, the lightless tear grows larger every round. I mean, that's cool from a story perspective. But you know what's really cool? If you play the Warhammer Forty K um, tabletop RPG and you're a caster in that, and you roll on their like misfire table for casting a 100 and, and it opens up a whole new table where everything's bad. Um, yeah. So like in everything is like a very immediate consequence that you actually have to feel. I don't know. I think it's fine. I mean, I think for people who play this game, like I play like games where you're going to die every like so often. It's a very normal yeah. things, but for this, I think it's really good. You know, I think it's fun. I think it's, it, it's interesting. I have better than five E. So that's good. Yeah. I think I think I think it's fine. I think it's neat. I, I here's the thing. It's just like everything else. It's exactly what I expected. Yes, exactly what I expected. Um, and then it's casting. It's just a it's a fucking check. It's a it, int check. It's a wisdom check. There's critical successes. There's DCs. Like it, the success and failure is fine. Critical success is fine. Uh, you may double one of the spell's numerical effects, whether that's its damage or its rounds or whatever. Easy, simple, fine. I, it's fine. Um, I do like critical that. Rule. Fit, yeah. Um, critical failure talks about focus and all the rest of that stuff. It's basically like an easy version of concentration, which I always fucking hated. It's whatever. Um, uh, I will say penance. Uh, the GM determines the exact nature of the penance you must undertake based on your deity and alignment. Penance requires a holy quest. So, um, priest spells for critical failures. If the spell was a priest spell, your deity is greatly displeased and revokes its powers. You can't cast that spell again until you complete ritualistic penance to your deity and successfully complete a rest, okay? Then it talks about what penance is, right? Penance requires a holy quest, ritualistic atonement, or a material sacrifice that you donate or destroy. Inadequate or subversive penance, such as donating your sacrifice to a party member, only displeases your deity further. I don't know how I feel about this. I feel like I don't I don't know why I'm torn. Like it's it's a kind of a mechanical bit of like narrative, which which I like. That part of you like I do like it's like, yeah, I mean, now you guys need to divert from what you're doing and you need to mm -hmm. go to the shrine that's nearby. It's like in the uh, it's in the wrong direction from where you're gonna go, and you need to clean out this shrine from whatever is inhabiting it to like mm -hmm. as your penance, <laughs> you know? Like yeah. And I, I like I like that that brings your deity into the game. Like, yeah. I do like that, you know, law, chaos, like, it's the way that, like, lawful paladins should, like, I never worried, about, the only time that I ever worried about alignment ever in 5e is if someone plays a lawful good paladin. Only time. Because as soon as you jaywalk, your spells are fucking gone, motherfucker. Like, <laughs> prove I it again. I think for this, maybe, if you're going to do something as open form as penance, um, yeah. giving a little roll table of, like, here's what, here's some, uh, here, like, wait, is there More a roll table penance? Um, there's a sacrifice. There's a list of things it could be. There's some sacrifice values. There might be some. There might be some more stuff in the gym section we can go over. Like it, this does not lack for roll tables. I, I just I don't mind the whole concept. It's fine. Um, I don't know. It's fine. I mean, wizards roll the mishap table. Priests do penance. I think that's a good way to split it. Yeah. Yeah. I'll tell you right now. The, uh, the one thing that I really love the bottom of each mishap table like has a page border that's different for each one, which I really <laughs> love. On page 46, it's some like some like goblin or some like whatever half orc caster doing a lightning bolt. On the next page, it's it's a it's one with an eye patch throwing like fucking like whatever magic missiles or balls of some type. Like those are great little pieces. I wish there was more of those throughout the entire book. The little things on the bottom being different. I'll tell you right now, the thing that I hate most about um, the uh, magic system is the worst part about the 5e magic system, scrolls, right? Scrolls yeah. and wands, they contain magic spells, right? So right off the bat, they contain magic spells, right? Spellcasters can use them to cast these spells, all right? That's when the, that's, that period should have been right there, period, done. 
right? But we keep going. Spellcasters use them to cast these spells if the spell is on their spell list, even if they don't know the spell. What? Why? Why? That never, I'd never enforce that. That's stupid as fuck. You can only cast a spell if you already know the spell. Well, if the, if the scroll contains the spell, why do you need to already know the spell? Yeah, I've never enforced that rule literally ever. So, so fucking dumb. You, there, no one's ever given me a good justification where I'm not like, no, dumb. Yeah. Um, so, um, that's it. And then same thing with wand scrolls. I mean, spell attributes, range, duration, it spells, it spells. Then we get a million fucking spells, which is fine, but it, it really put the book to 300 pages. I'm just going to the bookmarks. We're skipping all this shit. Um, every spell. <laughs> I mean, it's fun. Like the spell offerings, I've, I went through them because I'm me. Your spell um, boy. And they're yeah. exactly what you think they are. All of them. Exactly what I was going to say. If you if you can think of a spell that you want to cast and it's existed in a dragon game, it's in here. Stone skin, restoration, mirror image, it's all here. Um, and then there's the uh, a, a run through like the actual gameplay section. And then we're pretty much done because everything after that is just GM stuff and monsters. So um, there's another narrative here to start the gameplay section with our boy Krieg is back. Um, he does some stuff. OK, I will say this real quick little rant. Crawlers, right? Crawlers are those who dare the lost halls and caverns of the Shadow Dark. They're called by many names. Crawlers, Delvers, Explorers. Cr no, they're not called Crawlers. I hate it. I hate that. I don't know why. It struck a chord with me that when I would never use that. I think that's dumb. I don't care about it. Like, I mean, yeah, I mean, I guess I would never use it. I would just, I mean, we always call it Dungeon Delvers or just call it Delvers. Those, those group just call it a Delver. Pull around yeah. in stories. It's just called a thing a thing, and my problem is I don't even necessarily mind the word crawlers, but again, the only thing that's dark about this game is that the game tells you that it's dark. Yeah. Like, yeah. So to then say, well, then you're a crawler. Like, I don't like it. I don't like it. Um, <clears throat> this whole, so it talks about basic stuff. Guess what? Rolling the dice. Advantage. You know what it is. Roll yeah. two, take the higher. Disadvantage, take the lower. It cancels out. Natural 20s are a thing. Natural 1s are a thing. I don't mind the the, the D6 decider thing. People use that as like a fate die. Yeah, thing right now you then. have luck tokens, I think, is our next part, which is like, it's just inspiration, but you can carry it's a just more inspiration. Um, which is fine. Um, there's a stack shot that's using stats, and it really just gives you standard you like three or four uses for each individual stat just to give you more context to how they're used yep. uh, you know uh yeah. I, it's all really good what's i'm it's just wondering it's like isn't this just more game master material no, this is the basic of the. I mean, this is gameplay. Like, this is how to actually play the game. You know what I mean? Like, I, I, this maybe is how I'm, I'm works. looking at like time and turn order and like, oh yeah, I guess no. But, that, but that is, still, that's the that's, that's the rules still, of the game. Like, yeah, like, you're right. You're right, you're right. Ma making checks exactly what you think is roll a d20. There's difficulty classes. Contested check is exactly what you think. The, okay, time is one of the only like like um, new mechanics that was put into the game that's not just either five e or or it's been used somewhere else. I hate it. I don't like it. I don't think it would ever actually be used, maybe in playtesting or whatever, but basically it's real time. A torch lasts a real a real hour. A real world hour. Yeah, I did read that. I don't I don't I don't like it for so many reasons, right? Because here's a problem that I have with it a lot of time. It's the time passes section. So, a torch lasts a real hour, okay? Then there's turns and rounds, which are abstracted amounts of time, right? So, a turn mm -hmm. takes 10 minutes in a room, so it's not real time then, because as soon as you skip and go, okay, we, we did this whole room, we didn't find anything that's 10 minutes, let's keep going, that you already aren't using real time. And then there's a time pass section that says, every moment of the game doesn't have to be accounted for in real time. Then what the fuck is the point? Yeah. <laughs> uh. Yeah, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It talks about minute and then it gives you a whole section on how to not use real time. So just don't do it. Like, it's just I like the, that, I like that they had an idea because they immediately the first thing you use reference real time. Uh, it's yes. the first part of this section. And even at the bottom of that section, it says, um, yeah, I guess if you can't track real time, which I'm not sure what that, you know, you can yeah. um, hours, 10 rounds, you know? Yeah. It, I mean, it literally. So, what gets me the most, like I said, is like the 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 top of the left column, real time. This is real time, and the first sentence on the right column is every moment in the game doesn't have to be accounted for in real time. Like, it, unnecessary. Just th this whole thing could just be chopped out. I like that they try to come up with a new mechanic. 
doesn't work yeah. it's fine turn Surpass order that. exactly what you think it is crawling exactly what you think it is there's light sources there's darkness i mean there is a little bit of a section here that you talked about before where like if you're in the dark um uh the shadow dark quote unquote in total darkness um a creature who is not darkness adapted has disadvantage on tasks it undertakes a require sight and uh, the entire environment becomes quote unquote deadly so like being in the dark is bad and i like that they try to make the torch real time so that when you're in the dark it's bad it's fine it works that's it everything else is the same movement conditions resting danger level campfires self surprise like combat all of the rest of this we don't need to read because guess what you've played this game before I think if you this is your first game, this is a gr this section's great. Um, it, well, it's the, literally just the rules of the game. I mean, it's, it's the like, rules of the game. I think, but you know, you we have a lot of context on these things, and like, mm -hmm. I don't really need to look at hexploring because I I run a weekly hexploring group. You know, like yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, I mean, I think it is all of it is exactly what you think it is. The only <laughs> thing know? that's a little different, though, and everything is exactly what you think it is. Turns, rounds, combats, actions, movement, pretty much all the same. The only thing really different is death, right? So that is the next time there's a new mechanic. A character goes to zero HP, they fall unconscious, and they're dying. Um, if a character goes above HP, they're no longer dying. But there's a death timer. It's fine. Death timer. A dying character rolls 1d4 plus their con modifier. What's your con? Uh, plus two. So 1d4 plus 2, a minimum 3, right? Um, yeah. But it's a minimum 1 on their turn. They die in that many rounds unless healed or stabilized. I, so I, would, I just rolled a d4. I rolled a 4, so I have 6 rounds. Um, 6 rounds on each of the characters' subsequent rounds. turns. Hey, yeah. hey, listen, listen. You're just going to lay there for the next 6 rounds. <laughs> And that's fine. Here's the thing. So on each of the characters' subsequent turns, that player rolls a d20. On a natural 20, they come up. Stabilizing DC 15 intelligence check. And if you it, it hit the end of the timer, you're dead. Here's the thing. It's better than a million fucking um, um, uh, rolls. Like, someone right. came up with a bright idea. Uh, I saw I saw a fucking YouTube video about someone being like, roll your death checks behind the screen. Don't do six million death checks. Do one and then you die. Fuck off. Yeah. Um, the problem I have <laughs> with this, though, is a couple of things. One, that's too many fucking rounds for somebody to sit there doing fucking nothing. Yeah, that's a kind of a long time. Kill Honestly, kill me. Let me roll a new character. Uh <laughs> that's, that's it. Just die. Just die. Make one death check and be done. You don't need half this page. Make one death check. If you fail, you're dead. Like, fuck off. That's it. So uh, it's I like that it's different than five e. It's not it's not it's not better in the ways that it needs to be. Um, yeah. Overland travel exists, downtime exists, carousing exists, and there's a whole table for it. I mean, at this point, is there anything specific in the, in the rest of the gameplay section that you really wanted to touch on? Nope. Um, uh, carousing. Which, there's a whole example of play that's great. Um, there's a game master section, which honestly is pretty much just like really standard basic advice. Like these are your roles at the game master. Like be a fan of your players. Use dramatic. This is fine. I I don't mind any of this. We're not going to go yeah. over it because you don't need it. If you've played a game before, you've read all this before. If you haven't, it's great information to have. Um, it does give you a little bit more um, uh, discussion on action economy, stats, balancing. That's a section I'm not a big fan of. Be unpredictable. I think here's the thing: is this is for players that have only played 5e and are trying to do something a little different. I wouldn't have minded more direction yeah. on how it's different and how you should play differently that's what i really wanted to see there's a section here on like choices matter but not really any way that explains to someone who's only played 5e why and how you know what i mean there's a little bit i wouldn't have minded a lot more yeah cool. um let's rate this I, I, yeah i just want to see if there's anything else so there's so the random encounters table a million of them a, a million million of them Super so cool. it literally it literally goes from 142 to 184 there's like 40 pages of tables then you hit monsters there's a whole section monsters there's a page for how their attributes work and how to generate them which is good information to have great um, and then monsters literally from page 191 to uh 265 70 pages of monsters mm -hmm. and then there's mm -hmm. like um 25 there's pages of magic items um no way more than that it basically the rest of the thing is magic items all the way down to 321 it's, it's just magic items all the way down <laughs> literally like 60 percent of the book no i'd say like 70 percent of the book is magic spells 
monsters, magic items, or treasure tables, or random encounter tables. Yeah. So again, that's why none of that is in these. I'm glad that the zines exist. So, yes. So, um... Uh, join the dark. There's a whole section here with links to all the stuff, the licensing, all that crap. So, um, and then, my God, more tables. So, um... Review. For those that don't know, we review things. We do an in-depth review. We do an in-depth read-through. Then we uh, rate it on a scale up to 50. It's 10 points for five different sections. There's art and style, which is the quality and quantity of the art and the style in which it's used. There's the layout, which specifically talks about not the, not the visual aesthetic style of the layout, but navigability, ease of reading, all those kind of things. Um, there's the rule set, which is like, if it is a new rule set, how do we enjoy it? If it's an adapted rule set, how well is it adapted? Originality, which is nothing's original, but is this done, is parts of it done in a unique way, whether that's a setting, the rules or something else. Um, and then there's value, which is not just how much the core stuff costs, but the bang for your buck. How much extra stuff do you get? Character sheets, generators, um, extra zines, third-party licenses, all that stuff. It's the amount, it's the, it's the value that you get for buying the game, for buying into the game itself. So, art and style. Thoughts? Uh, I think the art that's in here is really, really good. Um, the first... 80 pages there's a lot of art and it dwindles very quickly after that like from i think 80 to the full page piece on 100 there's only one piece of art that is a picture of dice um mm -hmm. and it kind of carries on like that but the art's really good yeah. uh i i will say that um like the magic items almost every page does have at least one of the items uh, as art Sweet. And okay, if every man. item had the art, it would be like 500 pages long. Yeah. Totally. Um, I think that the same thing with um, the monsters. Just about every page, if not every other page, has at least one of the monsters drawn. So there is a ton of art through a lot of those yeah, pages. Yeah, that's cool. I'm glad it picks back up because it gets pretty sparse yeah. through like 80 through the, and then through the random encounters. Oh. Uh, but it picks back up on oh. monsters. Okay. One last thing I want to show real quick. Let me kick back to the page here the actual piece of art used for the premium cover um so fucking beautiful like really glad they chose this one really 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 gorgeous and fantastic um this is the actual inked page really really great so um so what are your thoughts i mean i like i like every aspect of this art style quantity pretty much everything way better than fifth edition it's so much better totally um, um what are you thinking I mean, I, I genuinely think it's for, for the amount of art that's in a 330 page book, I think it's a lot. And I think that I love almost every single piece in here. And um, I think the style, even though there's like six different artists, is really consistent. It's I mean, very consistent. I mean, yeah. uh, there are different artists, but they all strike like the same genre esque. Yeah. You know? New old so school thinking, kind of. Like a seven or eight. Where are you at? I mean, I'm honestly because like the covers and stuff like that. I'm I'm probably like an eight for this. I think it's really I think I'm really good, good for an eight for this as well. I think I'm a little bit of a lighter eight than you are, but I'm I think I'm still good for an eight. Yeah, I think I'm I think I'm good for an eight on this too. Um. Uh. T -t 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 uh. Layout. Okay. Listen, for anyone who has not watched this before. I I love hyperlinks. I think they're so necessary in 2023 with PDFs and stuff like that. You have to have bookmarks. You have to have hyperlinks. The 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 PDF and the book itself has to be navigable. I love the amount of hyperlinking in this. I think this is an for, for 330 oh, dude, this, pages. This book, it, yeah, this is where this book's gonna get the highest score. It's gonna get layout yeah. right now because it's I, super readable, hyperlinked to hell, um, and it's it, it, the way it's put together is is easily like referenceable and makes sense. Um, yeah, I if I did not have an issue navigating this PDF, and it's 330 pages long. I yeah. really enjoy it. I mean, um, this is I a think, what you want for this year. I'm gonna let you pick this one. What do you think? So uh, it's not gonna be a 10 because of the Troika. I, it's right. not gonna be a nine because it doesn't have like we're talking like links back to the chapters. It's not color coded. It's not any of that stuff. To me, it's again between like a seven and an eight for me. And I honestly I think, think it's about an eight. I'm I think I'm a strong seven, light eight. I'll let you be the tiebreaker, though. Yeah, I, think I mean, realistically, yeah. I think I eight. think an eight too. I think outside of um, those, the extras, as far as like color coding, all that, I'm pretty positive it's going to have a ribbon in the books and stuff like that. So, like, I, I think this is about as high as it can possibly get without being extra. 
you know so i i yeah. really enjoy that rule set uh th to me this is probably going to be the thing one of the two that are the lowest scores yeah. for it rule set man this is a this is a strong uh six for me um, i think six too i think it's i think it's i it's think it's totally fine it's fine it's absolutely fine so totally so uh, fine. like uh, five, the, would, five uh, would be completely average and i think yeah. That it's it's a it's a it's a little bit better than so totally average. Yeah. Uh, so it, Nora Rose, uh, who does Monkey Paws games on Twitter, recently did a tweet. Oh yeah, through, I forgot we talked um, about this earlier. Oh yeah. Yeah. Literally, recently did a tweet through of this, and the one word that kept coming up over and over again, and I think their their final like thing on was is that this whole game is fine. It's fine. It's, it's fine. fine. It's I would I would if someone wanted to play a game, I would play this game without complaining. If someone wanted to play 5e, I would ask them to, to run this instead. Yeah. Um, the rule set is it's to me again, it's fine. I think if I did pick two words, it's fine and it's basic. It is exactly what you think if you've ever played a dungeon game. There's nothing crazy, new or interesting. The only things I think the worst parts of it are the parts that keep 5e, like the whole like scrolls, you have to know the spell thing. Yeah, um, why I think did that they keep that rule? It's dumb. I, I think that um the um uh I think that the um the time thing, which is really like something they do talk about, something that um, uh, I think they think is a feature, I, is one of the things I dislike the most. I would never use it. Um, so I, I think I think it's a I think a six is solid for this. Like again, there's nothing new or different about this game in any way, shape, or form, um, which I don't think they were trying to do. I think they were just trying to modernize an older rule set. I think they did a good job on modernizing an older rule set, but as far as the rule set itself goes, it's fine. Um, originality. Yeah. Another one that is just not gonna... Uh, bro, the whole honestly, this is gonna be... Uh, this is gonna be maybe the worst score I've, I've ever given. This is a five for me. Um, this is, like, is just... It's it's uh it's fine it's, and basic. It's fine. Fine and basic. It's you know I I I'm almost want to give it a six because of the concept and I I personally think successful attempt I mostly successful attempt to mash up five E and OSR. I think there are I, in my opinion things like um like big fucking axe in uh, it, or or uh, uh like five torches deep are better five E hacks. Um, I don't think this I do think this is kind of like a, an O5R versus um, a uh, if, you, if you don't know O5R. Please never say that again. <laughs> no, no. Like, no. Uh, Thriftomancer actually on their on their blog has a, a great article on what like an O5R is. And it's a mashup yeah. of, of OSR and 5E. If you don't know the blog, just Google O5R and Thriftomancer. It's a great blog to read. I do think they do that. And I think as far as originality goes, I mean, there My is no setting. There is no anything. Is that I knew everything that was in this book when we got like five pages in. I was like, and yeah, honestly, and the problem is most of the things that I didn't know, I, I didn't like, like the time thing. Um, yeah, I do. I that's, do. That's I do. Rules. I'm talking about originality. You know, I'm yeah. talking about the origin, the originality of this game. Yeah. It's it doesn't exist again. The only reason I want to give it a six instead of a five, like above bang average is because I could have like anyone that's played a dungeon game could write this and it would be what it is. But I do like again, I like the attempt to create the bridge and I think they successfully did what they attempted to do. And I do think it does that's tweak something. I, I don't think that's originality, though. Like. Yeah, yeah you win. <laughs> uh, I think I think five. I think bang average. I think is 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 correct. I mean, because but here's the other thing is I think that was kind of the point. I might yeah, be wrong. Yeah, maybe. I, I think don't that know. was kind I of the point. Be, yeah, in the room with them, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then and then value wise. So as far as um, the uh, Kickstarter pledge, the digital edition of the core rulebook and everything was only like thirty bucks. Um, the complete digital edition, which gave you like. All the digital like core rule books, screen, um, the three curse scrolls, which we didn't talk about. It's these already existing like expanded zines, which are actually really enjoyable. It does add a lot of stuff like more even like more classes. Like the first one has like a witch class, a warlock class, like 
um, stuff like that. It adds a lot of content to it. You get all of that kind of stuff. Um, and then the core physical was $60 for um, a 330 page book um, is is not is is a good value in my opinion. Yeah, it's really not um, an expensive like for no. like for how big the book is. No. You can still make a late pledge right now, mm-hmm. right? Um, so if I did you did you list the late pre- pledge prices? Are they the same? Oh no! What? So the premium was eighty bucks. How much are the? And then real quick, the, the... It's, it's still so it's exactly the same. It's exactly okay. the same for the late so, pledge. If you go to their website and you want to get just the PDF right now, it's thirty dollars. But like, yeah. But you could just go do a late pledge and get, and get. I, I don't know. I I think that there's so much. I will say there's so much in this book um, that its value score is probably going to be pretty okay. Um, yeah, I think it's okay because here's it, the thing. The the here's the thing. The the complete pledge for for physical and all the it's 109 dollars, and that gives you the core rule print and pdf of the core rule book the gm screen three zines and this zine is really nice you get three more of these you get mini adventures which are already out there's like a bunch of mini adventures pre-gens character sheets all that kind of stuff for a hundred dollars for a 330 page like leatherette book with a bunch of zines and all that in pdf i personally find it to be a really good value I for me, I think this one's probably going to get about an eight on value. I mean, yeah, I think between a seven and an eight. I, I mean, even yeah. like I said, just the fact that the quick, the other thing too is the quick start still exists. Like you can also yeah. get the quick start zines, and honestly, like I love these better than that. Honestly, like I would have been fine if this was just the book. Um, but I do think the cursed scroll. I've read through the other PDFs, and I do have the first one in physical are really, really good. I think it does good good value. I think eight is really solid for this. I think you're right. Cool. So um eight for value. Um that's gonna give us um, I'm gonna take your word for this one. It's the first time because it's getting late. So 35 is fine. It's fine. Um I it's it's about where I thought it would be. You know, I think the art I think the the art um I think the art really carries it a lot. Um I would never, here's the thing. I would never run this game for anyone. Um, but if someone wanted to run 5e and they did this instead, I would play it. I'd play it. Yeah. Fine. Oh, I, I would a hundred percent play this game. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. If someone else, if someone else asked me to. Yeah. Yep. And that's fine. So the last thing I really want to talk about is, uh, is, is stuff like this right here. Um, so, uh, shadow dark content has existed and this is another, well, honestly, huge bonus to the value source of victory, who we've talked about a ton on this podcast, who is just, again, a font of game design knowledge has done a ton of adventures and five E stuff has been, uh, putting out a lot of stuff for shadow dark. Um, and this is one of them, which you can get on Lulu. And first of all, look at that virgin cover. I mean, completely, um, this is their adventure, Shrine of the Jaguar Princess. Um, you can check out Cersei's stuff at Linktree slash Cersei Victory, uh, Victory to He has, I think at this point, like five or six Shadow Dark adventures. They're really good, done really, really well. Um, I, you know, I, I would play or run anything that he ever does. So the fact that a bunch of these already exist and most of Cersei's stuff is free on his website is a huge boon. So you should absolutely go to all of those pages. And if you want to download the Quick Start right now, and if you want adventures to run, definitely run Cersei's stuff. You can find links to all of this stuff, the physicals, everything on that page. So there's already something you can do with it. But if you're going to run it, just run it with Cersei stuff because it's honestly, it's going to be better than a lot of other stuff. Um, and that is the Shadow Dark RPG. Any closing remarks? Farewell. That's it. Uh, you can find us at all the places as normal, the.weekly.scroll on Instagram, the Adventure Archive on YouTube. We recently passed 800 subs. Thank you all so much. <laughs> really shooting for for that thousand uh if you could do us a favor and drop more reviews on apple for the podcast that'd be great you can also do it on spotify now um and and you know you can rate and follow there um we're at like 120 something followers on spotify which is cool i think it's a new thing Mm -hmm. um and then for all of the um uh find out what we're doing next it's weekly underscore scroll on twitter um you guys all have a wonderful day that's been the shadow dark rpg um hunter i will see you i think in two weeks yeah two weeks And uh, you guys all have a good night. Bye, everybody. Bye.